everybody. Hello, Wilma. How are you? Hello, Carlo. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. I don't know which one of your cameras is active. Who's come one? Two, two, three. Nagawa na ba kita ng co-host? Malugod, everybody who is following this live stream and others that are viewing it on their other web pages. This is the 89 to 9 Congress being convened. I understand that Mr. Authority Masagas will not be joining us. I think he is involved in other things right now. But uh, he will be um, joining us maybe next week or in the succeeding weeks after his present activities are, um, are dealt with. Anong balita, Carlo? Anong balita? Anong balita? Anong balita? Wilma, nakataas ang kamay mo. You want to talk? Uh, I give you the floor. Balitaan lang muna. Kasi ating speaker ay darating sa alas 9, alas 9 pa siya darating. So meron tayong mga uh, ilang or, uh, isang oras na magbalitaan. Anong balita? Anong balita dyan, Wilma, sa Nueva Ecija? Nueva Ecija ba yung inyo? Uh, you can unmute yourself, Wilma. Uh, okay, uh, walang balita si Wilma, hindi nagsasalita. Uh, ikaw na lang, Ben. Anong balita sa iyo? Ask to unmute. Pag-abi, uh, kasama kami ni Carlo. Yes, balita yes, kasama ni, kami. Balita oh. ni Congressman uh, Atkinsa, ang Singapore wala na ng... Uh, wala nang lockdown, wala nang mask, wala nang face shield, at wala nang social distancing. Back to normal na sila. O, tayo lang ang hindi abnormal. Ang nora, abnormal ay abnormal ating literato. So, baka itong week na ito, mapail uh, uh, si ano? si Arone Aron ng uh, kaso. At uh, kalat-kalat ito, bawat probinsya, kung pwede sabi niya 1 million para makita natin kung ano decision ng mga justices. Kasi kung ni, yeah. i, i, ipunin mula sa isa, pag natalo, talo lahat. Pero kung uh, marami, kung libo, matalo man ang uh, isang libo, may isang libo na matalo. At uh, magkakalit-kalit siya ang uh, judgment dyan kasi bawat judge, iba ang uh, pag-intindi niya. So pagdating sa, sa Supreme Court, ano ang final decision? Yeah, eh, medyo maganda ang uh, takbo na ganyan kung mangyari. Yeah. Mm, uh, okay. Maganda yan. At kasama namin tadabi si Dr. Edia Bayani, yung president ng CBCBH, at possible po magpatawad siya ng meeting this Friday ulit. Yan po in-announce niya. Dr. Claret? Si Dr. Edia mismo. Oo. No. Okay, Dr. Uh, uh, specialist sa uh, COVID? Dr. Research is shy. Si Dr. Ocularet ang uh, virologist. Nasign siya sa Africa, pero ayaw sa panimalaan dito. <laughs> okay. Kaya gusto ko sana ma-invite si Dr. E.D. din dito sana eh. At tayo naman, nag-invite tayo ng marami. Everybody is welcome, whether Tilawan, Komunista, o kung sino, RDRG, at saka yung mga group, uh, yung mga nasa kay uh, company Pacquiao, nasa company Soto, Luxon. Lahat sila ay welcome, no? Kasi Congress naman ito ng lahat. Kaya lang ang ating main uh, uh, team dito pag uh, sale sa atin, sa usapan natin, is that we will be respecting the primacy of the 1899 Constitution. Kasi yun ang ating primary advocacy. Right. Yeah, correct. At so, na-invite ka rin sa... Na yun, uh, yes, go ahead. Yes. Are you saying something? Na-invite din kita, na kita kagabi sa meeting. Nag-send ako ng PM sa'yo eh. Uh, baka nasa ibang mga meeting ako kasi may mga Zoom meeting akong inintindi. 
Uh, iba-ibang kampo kinakausap po. Nung isang gabi ata, isa kong kausap, isang uh, tao ng uh, PDSP, Partido Demokratiko Socialista ng Pilipinas. Nung isang gabi, uh, nung the same time, nakausap po rin yung mga miyembro ng uh, PDP Laban na uh, binabatis nila Pan, nila uh, Kusi. Uh, hindi ko nakakausap yung company. Yan, morning sa atin si Jingel. Kumusta sa Tagagaraw, Jingel? Ano nang na dyan? Good morning po sa lahat. Okay lang po. So far, so good. Eh, tuloy ang buhay. Tuloy ang lahat. Wala, wala ka nang mask dyan. Wala ba kayong GCQ o CQ o kahit anong klaseng ECQ? Kasi di ko kamalala ko. Mga ECQ. Ako sa QQ. Pahala na sila. ECQ kami. I have that. I have, to, I have the right to take care of my health. That's all your honor. Okay, yung natin problema. Marami sila eh. Tapos ang uh, nakikita nyo yung social media, banat ang lahat ng trolls laban kay Pacquiao. Pinagtutulungan nila ng gusto si Pacquiao. Kaya nung isang kahapon, in-interview si Pacquiao ng umaga, uh, halos ang boses niya galit at saka mangyayak-ngayak pagsagot sa interviewer. Kasi meron daw uh, prayer uh, warrior si Kim Buloy na pinagdadasal na matalo siya sa kanyang boxing. Kaya <laughs> galit, galit ang mama. <laughs> Sabi niya doon na uh, hindi ko naman kinakalaban si Presidente. Eh para ko tuwing nakikita ka, nasabi ko sa kanya na ako galit sa corruption talaga. At sinabi ko sa kanya, gusto ko lahat ng corrupt makulong. Oh, pareho naman kami ng gusto. Bakit nila ako... Uh, pinagbabawalan na kumampi sa mga mahirap kasi galing naman ako sa mahirap. Maganda yung kanyang sinabi doon na kinam na Ben na nahanap mo ba yung record ng DCBB? Hindi ko. Recording sila siguro noon. Hindi ko ano kasi nag-vacuum ako ng mga carpet ka ano mas ko pintura kita ako naman dami naman dumi kasi nag-vacuum ako. Oo. Oo. Uh, may may boarding house si Ben eh, sa mga seaman o kaya mga taong nagpupunta sa area nila. Hindi to mga seaman na halo-halo kung sino lang may gusto manirahan, open siya. Oh, okay. Dati yan na, na design ko talaga yan para sa mga marino na 50 hmm. pesos a day lang. Pero sabi nila, malayo daw ang uh, Quezon City sa Manila. Oh, lalo ngayon malayo sila doon sa probinsya lang magaling. So nagdami tumatawag ngayon na pupunta, eh, paano ka kuya puno? Eh, paano ka di sa no araw pa sana? Oo, oh, mga ilang kwarto ba yung minamanehar mo? Ah, uh, unsi doon sa kabila, dito sa natirahan ko Siam. Pero ano uh, siya, nasabi ko nga kay Mrs. Kahit uh, wag mo asahan mga anak mo na tutulong sa iyo. Tayo lang uh, Pwede na. Ngayon, kung magtulong man sila, eh, salamat. Eh, kung wala, salamat din. Kasi obligasyon natin yan paralin. Hindi yung obligasyon nila balikan tayo. Oh, tama, tama yan. Tama yan. Pero yung ating sistema sa Pilipinas, wala tayong mainam na social security system. Pinapabayaan lang ang mga tao. Pag matanda na, wala na kayong gamit. Mahala na kayo sarili. Oh. Yan nga. May, may, may balita pa nga na kung hindi ka magpabaksinisyon, mapinding ang pensyon mo. Subukan nyo ako. Pindigin pensyon ko na, ayaw ko magpabakuna. <laughs> <laughs> o, si, si Kwan, si uh, Wilma, nakataas ang kamay. Ano ba, Wilma? May gusto kang sabihin? Matagal nang nakataas yung kamay mo. Yung, uh, <laughs> uh, raise your hand mo. Kung uh, wala kang sasabihin, ibaba mo kasi makonfuse yung mga tao. <laughs> o, anong balita dyan? Ikaw na magsalita. Ano nangyayari dyan sa inyo? Sa Nueva Ecija ba yan? Nueva Ecija? Sa Vera po. Saan? Hello po? Isabela. Isabela po. Ah, Isabela oh, yung inyo. Ano nangyari sa Isabela? Wala pa naman, sir. Kaya lang yung talk ko sa Kwan, using my hard dick, ah. Pinakilala ko yung what group I belong. Eh, sinabi ko yung shadow government at saka idealistic military. Eh, and then, gusto kasi ni Captain Ray Valerio Jr. na Juan, ganun ang sasabihin ko. 
And then, sabi niya, ready daw siya. <clears throat> kahit na anong mayayari. Ganon. Mm. Si uh, kasi, Captain Ray. Kasi kung daw, parang magulo daw yung mga political parties. Eh, handa daw sila uh, ano mo mangyari. Yun lang po. Mm. Pero this, okay. this is a, walang, walang masyadong balita po. Kasi tahimik, is partially populated kasi kami. Ganun. Ganun lang po. Okay. So, anong nga nangyari sa lakad mo, Ben, dun sa mga marino? Sabi may issue ka? May issue? Ah, sa mga marino, yan na sabi ko na pag ginausap mo, ah, para bang ah, okay lang. Okay, maganda yan ang ginagawa nyo. Yun lang, hanggang doon lang. Pero sabi na, Nasabi ko nga sa'yo eh, pinag-contribute ko sila tag piso-piso bawat isa eh, ayaw pa <laughs> contribute ng piso eh. Pero sa 60,000 training fee na lukuhan, nagbabayad. Ngayon nagsisi sila dahil ang training fee na 60,000 na yan, abulis na ngayon. Sabi niya, di putar kung saan man nag, uh, nagsayang na tayo ng pita at oras eh, naabulis pa. Kasi wala naman yun eh. Yoto korupsyon, kaya nagkaroon ng mga training na ganyan. Pero, nung pinatawag ko yan hearing sa Senado, kinatawanan pa ko ng mga gunggong dahil sabi nila, wala yan, suntok sa buwan yan. Ay ngayon na inaabulis, naku, patay ka kung bata ka, naabot ang uh, suntok ko, dumating sa buwan, ngayon abulis. <laughs> Sisi sila dahil nakapag-aral sila. Okay, si okay. Sir, so, sir <coughs> yung yung mga yung mga iba nating mga pangkait na mangilang-ilang lang tayo rito na pan usually after 15 minutes tumadami na tayo. Pero yung ating uh, speaker si Bobby Brillante, siya yung head noong uh, uh, Philippine National Coalition for uh, uh, Revolutionary Government and Charter Change. Mm-hmm. Mahaba yung kanilang acronym. Siya rin yung dating uh, karibar ni Pinay sa Makati mula po ng mga 1986, 87, ng mga unang eleksyon. Dati siyang vice mayor ng Makati. Appointed niya yan si Pre, vice mayor. O, oh, naging panyan siya. Dati nasa PCGG na yan siya. So matagal-tagal na rin siya sa pan. Dati kasama rin niya si Mang Lapos noong mga panahon nung panahon ni Marcos. Sila ay uh, labi sila sa Washington na uh, kalaban nila si Marcos. So mar- marami rin ang kanyang orientasyon na uh, iba-iba at uh, matututo tayo sa kanyang topic ngayon ng kanyang tablet ay uh, tungkol sa uh, mga iba-ibang uh, iba-ibang mga uh, federal at saka parliamentary structures na mga nangyayari sa mundo, ibang parte ng mundo at uh, yung mga relevant din sa atin 1899 na Philippine Constitution. Uh, let us welcome Mike Alunan. He just came. Kusta ba, Mike? Uh, yeah, fine, fine. Tell us what's the news on your end. Anong balita dyan? Uh, okay naman. I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, immersed in transport co-op organizing. Anong, uh, anong organizing ang ginagawa nyo? Uh, 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 sa jeepneys at saka tricycles. Pero nag-chain stock kami. Uh, while tuloy-tuloy yung co organizing uh, we're developing very innovative uh, marketing programs for vehicles. Uh, we're in proceeds from the sale of mga vehicles na, mo- na modernize. Meron kami plowback system. We call it a plowback. I call it a plowback. Where the proceeds from the returns will be uh, you uh, be, be Uh, plowed back into investments into f- livelihood like uh, mobile food stores something like that which will generate so much income that will pay for the financing of let's say yung modernized bus for instance kayang kaya kasi easily okay. can earn 2 3000 a day yung food store eh yung 1000 lang enough na to pay for the amortization of the mini bus Uh, sa ang area yan? Yeah. Something like that. Area. Area. And, uh, it can be general. So, yun yung mga programs din i-develop namin. So, it's 
it's something innovative kasi yung innovation doon is that what you earn, you plow back to increase the pie. So, hindi correct, correct. yung what you earn, hati-hati agad, sharing the pie agad. So, it multiplies exponentially kasi it keep on uh, plowing it back, something like that. And uh, where are you seeing this one? Saan kayo nang sismula nito? Uh, um, basically, Metro Manila kasi dito yung center talaga ng ano. At saka, and and the, um, uh, the market is huge in the sense that out of 200,000 jeepneys, only wala pang 2% nag-modernize so far. So, ganun kalaki yung ano, no? So, assuming hindi lahat ma, ano, kasi ang intention of government is that you 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 modernize, pwede mababawasan, pero i-increase yung capacity. A passenger capacity to a point na marireduce yung volume of vehicles. Now, when you reduce the volume of public transport vehicles, it will encourage private motorists to take public transport and leave their cars behind. Doon sa mga parking buildings, like sa mga stations, mga station, things, etc. So that, that's the model nangyari sa South Korea. South Korea had the worst traffic, among the worst traffic in the world because they had they have a car making industry, like Kia, Shangyong, Hyundai, etc. No? So, ang what happened, nag-improve yung mass transit nila, trains and buses, pati uh, uh, feeder bus, to a point that uh, people leave their cars behind is to pay mass transit but it did not affect sales of cars because as they increase your per capita income people can afford cars they buy cars out of status symbol out of yung convenience or, or gusto yeah, di ba? but uh, they they don't take their cars only when necessary so that's the directions of uh, what should happen you know so now, uh, meron mga transport groups so, who have opposed uh, modernization. No? Kami, yung grupo namin, uh, with all the shortcomings of the government programs on tra transport modernization, tinitingnan namin the positive side on the sense na kung meron pinansi for transport, sungga ba nyo? Kasi, imagine, uh, uh, a minimum paid up couple when you organize a co-op. Pinaka minimum is 15,000 kasi 15 minimum members. So, push for the necessary change and reforms because it's so leading with corruption, etc. No? So, that's how uh, we look at the uh, process. Siga one day, I'll, I'll make a presentation para, ano, no? so, so yung kaibang approach. Kasi, ah, kasi ang turo sa atin ng mahirap, <coughs> eh, mahirap yung sa utang, di ba? Parang ganyan. Eh, ito pang isa. <coughs> Yung turo natin sa mahirap, huwag mo bigyan ng isda, kundi turuan mo mangisda. Okay. <coughs> ang oligarchs iba. Ang, ang mahirap, turuan mangisda. Ang problema, yung tinuturo natin pangisda, yung hook and line. But the oligarchs, they don't use hook and line. What they use is credit line. And other people's money pa. So, yun yung difference. So, ang, ang lesson doon is, Let's learn from how the rich uh, 
expand their assets and wealth by leveraging, borrowing other people's money. And all of the oligarchs have set up their own banks, uh, although limited on what they can uh, borrow from their own banks, no? because there's a dossier law. What's dossier? Your director's office tackle related interest, very limited on what you can borrow from your own banks. So there, I think oh, there's a unwritten rule among them said mafia rule number one is that when sila sila nag-uutangan oligarch A utangin kita sa banko ko ikaw naman utangin mo ako sa banko mo diba? yun yung mafia rule number one mafia rule number two is unwritten rule dito lahat ng deposito ng taong bayan sa banko natin uh, lahat ng mga payroll mga etc eh, ang may karapatan gumamit sa pera nila, tayo lang, mga oligarchs. Correct, correct. So, uh, to quote and quote, no, to, uh, to, uh, just to exaggerate, no, to, uh, to be sarcastic, to exaggerate. Pero pag that's si Juan de la Cruz the, na mangutang, That's the practice of the banking cartel. Oh, uh, uh, pag si Juan de la Cruz na mangutang, pahirapan nyo. Oh, pa pahirapan nyo. Hingihan nyo ng three-year track record, hingihan nyo ng audited financial statements, profitable, ano. Hingihan nyo pa ng collateral. Eh, yung collateral mo sa probitya, hindi pwede yan. That crime lang. Ano, yeah. So, the pobre, ano, will never be able to uh, borrow, ano. Yeah, so, so yun, yung, yun yung, ano. So, when there is an opportunity for the poor to borrow, tingin naman, sunggaban. Yes, but yes. Let, me interrupt, let me interrupt you for a while, yeah, yeah, okay. uh, Mike. I, yeah. We have to identify for the newcomers. Yeah, sure. Our, uh, channel. We are the 1899 Congress convening. We are also the monitoring Congress of the present uh, government at the Associado Congress. We welcome Mr. Uh, Perdigon Jr., uh, who just uh, joined us also. And there is a person. Uh, yes, welcome to us. And also, there's a uh, there's a entry identified as three six eight six six three four six five seven. Welcome to us and listen to what we're doing. We are presently waiting for our uh, speaker. Uh, the privileged speaker today is uh, Bobby Brillante. He will be joining us at nine o'clock. So we're using the uh, hour right now uh, for socializing and exchange of notes on uh, uh, what is happening in our little corners of the world. And right now, um, uh, Mr. Michael Lunan is briefing us on his uh, financing scheme, uh, what, what I would call guerrilla financing in comparison to the oligarch financing that he is explaining to us. Go ahead, Mr. Michael Lunan. Yes. Uh, mag Mike, maganda yan ang kooption uh, na yan kasi nung uh, nag-seminar ako sa, sa BSP, nabanggit ni Governor Gunigundo nung siya pa ang Deputy Governor ng Central Bank na kung may two years na ang kooperative, pwede ka mag-utang hanggang na napunta kami sa barko, sabi niya ilang barko ko bilhin mo, utangin mo. Ilan nga ako ang kapasite? Sabi niya kahit isang daan, pwede. Kasi bilyones ang pira pala na nakaipon dyan ngayon na hindi pa nagagamit. Sabi niya. Yeah. On, on, on top of that, yung merong actually Banko Central, sila Diwa Gunigundo rin na gano'n yan. Uh, Nag-develop yan. Uh, by the way, Diwa Gunigundo, dating UP, Philip Collegian, that kept the best yan. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, uh, Merong tinatawag na credit surety fund, no? And credit surety fund, for every one peso, they can lend you 10 peso. It's it's done through the DBP Land Bank. No? So, so if you can develop, let's say, big capital build up 1 million, they can give you 10 million. So, merong kang 5 million times 10, 50 million, no? So, yun yung credit surety fund. Now, uh, so, if the poor, you can develop capital build-up among the poor, let's say 100, 200 of them, no? urban poor, etc. No? Uh, may na-develop with some help of mga NGO, mga ano, etc. Pwede silang makahiram ng ganyang that amount. So they can even own a Jollibee, McDo. I mean, the poor can now engage in bigger businesses. So hindi yung negosyong na sulsit-sulti lang, gagawa ng... <laughs> 
<laughs> mga tinap pipe up or whatever ng mga cakes, cakes mga so they can do it to bigger ano ngunit na pansin ko lang uh, ngunit na pansin ko lang na sabi niya uh, not necessarily necessary may collateral pag uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. na isang co-op wa, 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 walang collateral yon ang problema okay. nung pumunta na kami sa bangko nako ito na hinanapan yeah. namin ng collateral so ano ba ako ibig sabihin ng bangko sentral ng Pilipinas na baliktad Ah, de, yung 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 bangko na go-offer niyan, yung CSF, DBP and Land Bank lang. Oh. Ah, ang, ang ang mga bangko talaga are uh, okay. Di Land Bank ang pinuntahan namin. Ah, okay, Land Bank oh. Ang 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 kultura ng mga bangko natin, including our government banks. Sanay sa commercial banking. Ako ang commercial. Kadaan pa namin sa UWA kasi mga marino kami. Oo. Oh, oh. Pero alam mo ko anong nangyari kahit uwa oh, hinanapan pa rin ng uh, collateral kaya kako buset ang mga uh, may, buset talaga buset kaya talaga. sa uwa sabi nila Ben mag board mag member of the board ka sa uwa to naman ngayon masaya sige Pasok member ka kum pag ganoon ang OA at the time. It was just a minor office. Uh, kaiba ngayon, kaiba. At saka nag-increase mo. Uh, eh, siguro, uh, uh, let's let's not be ano, clouded with mga... Correct, correct. Uh, Let us welcome uh, Congressman Willie Villarama. He just joined us right now. Welcome, uh, Ta Willie. Magandang umaga po. Can we request yeah. those with numbers, yung mga PAMO, to, to rename and identify? Hmm. Nagkikwento Willie si uh, Mike Aluna nung tungkol sa mga financing schemes at scams sa ating uh, lipunan. At kung okay. paano nagugoyo yung mga mahirap at hindi nasasali sa financial mobilization ng fund. Sila ang mga, uh, ang mga mayaman lamang at saka ang corporate uh, groups na commercial uh, banking and thinking ang nakakagawa nito at... Uh, Pag uh, hindi pinapaalam sa karamihan ng uh, masa na ganito pala, pwede pa silang magbutang ng ganito. Tapos later on, ang mga perang uh, naiipon sa mga bagay na yan ay nasusungkit at napupunta sa kung saan-saan. Yan po ay isang fenomena at yan ay uh, documented ng research studies ng uh, mga ekonomista. At sinasabi nila na napakadami ng paraan ng pangungulekta ng pera sa Pilipinas Pero malakas ang ating savings rate, pero ang ating growth rate ay mababa. Kasi yung transmission from savings to investments ay hindi masyadong controlled at uh, hindi masyadong uh, democratic at kinokontrol lang ng mga ilang-ilang tao na nagkocontrol ng ating proseso. Ang mga informasyon na yun ay tinatago at hindi pinapaalam. Kaya kailangan natin talagang bukit-kitin at paalam at gamitin natin ang mga pera at malaman natin. Isang uh, isang uh, isang gusto nating magawa uh, sa grupo natin ay ma-document ang mga bagay na yan at malagay natin sa mga Google Drive na i-share natin sa bawat isa at ang lahat ng mga informasyon tungkol sa mga pera ng gobyerno ay madaling makita at madaling maipaalam na mayroong pera ng ganito ang gamitin natin sa ganito. Ganun din ang gagawin natin ngayon tayo magkikipag-coordinate sa Ang mga tao na nagbibigay ngayon ng mga informasyon kay uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao tungkol dito sa mga katiwalayan sa gobyerno at ang mga dokumentong yan ay ating ilalagay at ihahanay sa ating mga databases at gagawin nating systematic ang uh, storage at saka retrieval para meron tayong mga FTP uh, FTP 
uh, sites, ang tawag, ang FTP po ay kasabi, file transfer protocol sites. So, meron tayong malalaking data doon na basta nasa public domain ay madaling ma-download in Excel form para kasi yun ang pinakamalakas yung Excel o kaya in Calc form kasi yung software ng uh, open uh, systems ay Calc, C-A-L-C para ang lahat ng tao maalam. At saka ang aking, uh, ang aking in-encourage sa mga kabataan katulad nila kayo, kayo dyan, ikaw, si ikaw Carlo, iwa yung mga kaedad ninyo na nasa below 30 years old, kaya maging data warriors. Uh, itong mga data ng ito ay uh, I-assemble ninyo, magawa kayo ng gap analysis, tingnan kung ano pang mga ibang dapat nating malaman dito sa ating virtual government because we are a virtual government. At the center of this virtual government is our uh, shadow congress where we, which we are attending now. And all the structures of the executive department has been replicated in Facebook's groups like uh, Shadow DILG, Shadow DOH, uh, Shadow uh, whatever, Name any department of government and any important uh, bureau, we have that. The important thing that we want to do here is yung mga news about this department, ilagay natin doon. Ang mga reactions natin tungkol sa mga ginagawa ng mga department ng ito nandun. Ang mga katiwalayan na malalaman natin tungkol sa mga department ito ay ilagay natin doon. At gagawa tayo ng systematic process of communication through resolutions ng ating Congress to communicate certain things to departments of government where such scandals <coughs> or such uh, data uh, anomalies are happening. Para tayo ngayon ay magiging bosses ng uh, uh, mga walang bosses dahil sa hindi naman tayo mag, pwedeng maging totoong congressman kasi magbabayad ka, sabi ni Ben Lorke, ng 35 million sa pumilek para maging congressman, para masimulan lang ang kandidatura mo. Kaya wala tayong ganun. Kaya tayo, we appoint ourselves as congressmen in this shadow congress, reviving the spirit of the 1899 Congress of Malolos, and then also uh, replicating our monitoring process for each of the uh, 250 area districts of the present congress and the 57 sectors that they have identified as sectoral representations in congress. Yung mga party list na yan, kailangan bukititin natin ang kanilang nare-represent. Sabi nila sila ay ganito, ganito, ganito. Pero alam natin na ang party list ang pinakamalaking korupsyon ng COMELEC. Bago ka maging party list, bago ka makapag-register, <coughs> admitted muna. Tapos bago ka maggawa-gawa ng kung ano-ano pa, uh, ganun, ma marami namang to kang hihingin. Katulad nung na naging, pa, naging uh, experience ni uh, kasamang Ben Lorke, nung huli na, pag pinag-uusapan na ang pwestong ibibigay sa kada slot ng inyong party list, uh, 35 million na bawat isa. So, kaya hindi natuloy yung party list na ginagawa ni Ben Lorke ng mga siman. Yan ay hindi lamang uh, kwentong uh, <coughs> potsero, yan ay naging, uh, naging eksperyensya, naging karanasan ng karamihang nagtayo ng party list. Ang narinig ko pa, bago pa naging chairman yang si Sheriff Bass, Siya ang kolektor ng 5 milyon doon sa parang entry fee ng registration pa lang ng bawat party list. Ngayon, sila Congressman Villarama at sila Brother Mike Villarde ay gumagawa ng party list. Siguro, hindi nila tutukahan si Mike Villarde at Congressman Villarama ng 5 milyon kasi matatakot sila dyan. Pero yung mga ibang mga gumagawa ng party list ay ito ng tantalang toka. Para makasali ka, kailangan bayad ka ng entrance fee. Ano po yung masasabi niyo tungkol diyan, Congressman Villarama? Uh, al alam niyo po, ako po eh, ano eh, uh, pro-party list talaga. In the sense that uh, ang uh, unang pangarap ng uh, objective ng party list system ay para yung mga hindi pwedeng manalo sa regular na district contest pero maraming miyembro ay pwedeng i-represent yung kanilang uh, Yung kanilang grupo, no? Dahil yan, talagang ano eh. Yung mga, mga grupo na nasa laylayan ng ating lipunan, ano? Na pinauso oh. ni Vice President uh, Lenny, no? Eh, kasi <laughs> ang, ang nangyari, uh, nagkaroon ng ano eh. Nagkaroon ng uh, pagbabago. And uh, si, si Justice... Uh, Tony Carpiata ang ano eh, ang ponente 
Para bang uh, nabago yung dati kasi kailangan 2%. Ero, kailangan 2% ang ano eh. Naka 2% yung uh, ano yung uh, yung uh, kandi, yung ano eh, party list no 2% ng uh, total voting no. Noong uh, ako ang campaign manager ng uh, Buhay Party List na nag-number one kami. Kung sinunod yung 2%, uh, mga 7 seats kami. Ngayon, uh, bumaba yung yung ano, bumaba yung ano, yung uh, yung uh, desisyon sa korte na kailangan ano tatlo lang no? tapos kahit na below 2% percent pati na ilang uh, kahit na below 2% percent kahit na walang 1% percent pwede ka nang ano kasi pinupuno nila yung limang pung uh, limang pung silya kasi under the law x amount of uh, under the constitution x amount of uh, of the district congressmen dapat uh, ilagay sa ibigay sa party list. Ang party list uh, kasi kung kung talagang yung tunay na pangarap ng mga gumawa ng ating saligang batas. Uh, ano yan eh para kunarin mga magsasaka, no? Uh, mga vendors, no? Uh, ang nangyayari ano eh naging elitist na yung yung isang congressman, yung party list yung asawa, it's short na baboy na. Pero para sa akin dapat ano uh, mabago yan ibalik sa tunay na pangarap ng ating mga yung gumawa ng ating constitution under under core constitution yata yan dapat uh, ay ayusin kasi imposible pong manalo ang mga magsasaka sa isang district fight eh. pero malalalo yan makakakuha yan kahit isang silya dahil para kang tumatakbo senador eh Isipin nyo ha, yun nung nakarang halalan, hulaan nyo kung uh, ilang boto na kuha ng kulelat. Hihimatin kayo, 198,000. <laughs> it, it will be very tempting for uh, mga politiko, mga trapo, na, na pumasok sa, pumasok sa itatakbo yung anak o yung, o yung asawa as party list. Dahil 198,000, may isang silya ka na eh. Y- 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 yung po ang ano, yung po ang uh, nakakayak dyan. Eh, although kami, uh, itong aming bagong ano, tinayo na nakapending pa, et- eto, ang pangalito, ang pamilya muna. Ang pamilya muna kasi uh, maano po ako, aktibo po ako sa, sa, ano eh, sa faith-based group. No? So marami akong mga kilala, katoliko, protestante, member ako ng Elisha dahil. So, na nakita ko na yung pamilya ang pinaka ano eh pinaka walang tumutulong kumbaga sa ano ang, ang tumutulong sa pamilya uh, tingi-tingi ba kunare OFW merong uh, merong uh, OFW family lang ang concentration no pero ang pamilya ang, ang daming problema diyan eh w- walang isang grupo o political group na lahat ng kailangan ng isang pamilya para mabuhay eh pinag-aaralan. So yun, yun ang aking naging parang pangarap. And uh, of course it's a very ambitious no. Kasi ang, ang gobyerno lalo na DSWD kung titingnan mo yan ang ano yan, yan ang talagang ang ang tinutulungan niya yung mahihirap talaga, okay? Kung titingnan mo yung ano, doon ko binasa yung ano eh, yung, yung aking ano eh, yung objectives. Kung titingnan mo, sakot nila lahat eh. Tatanda, bata, na may programa sila. Pero ang tanong, bumababa sa munisipyo yan. Bumababa yan sa mahihirap. So, isa sa mga pangarap ko ay hanapin sa bawat munisipyo yung uh, DSW program na nandoon sigurado ko hindi naman lahat ng programa nila nasa ba so yung yung mga miyembro ng political party ikakabisahin nila yung mga programa na nasa munisipyo kasi yung mahihirap ay uh, hindi marunong mag-fill up ng form yan eh nakakaawa 
ang mga sinasabi niyo sa mga bangko, yung mga bangko po natin, anti-poor eh. I am a witness to that kasi, una-una, matagal na po akong nasa politika, nag-vice governor ako, then say sa anyos ako. Talagang uh, wala akong ginagawa kundi tulungan yung, yung, yung mahihirap. Kung uutang sila, sinasama ako sa land bank. Pag nakita nung farmer yung application form ng, <laughs> ng land bank, para bang uh, nagsasalita yung form, huwag ka na mag-apply at hindi mo maintindihan i-fill up itong mga tinatanong dito sa form na ito. Ang lilit ng mga, ang lilit ng mga spaces, kailangan siguro, ano, drops man ka para ma- ma-fill ma- up mo yung mga tanong. Pagalawa, English, no? Kung may Tagalog ba, napakaliit. What I'm trying to say, maaaring maganda ang mga pangarap nito mga nagtayo ng land bank, lahat itong para sa mahirap. Pero ang kanilang palibasa, hindi naman nila kinukusul tayo mahirap. Dapat yan, bago gumawa ng application form for a loan, ipamigay mo na muna sa mga leaders ng mga magsasaka. Ito ba naiintindahan nyo ba? Sigurado ako, 100% sasabihin, hindi nila naiintindihan at malalabo ng mga mata ng mga magsasaka eh. So talagang ano, uh, yan naman, tunay na experience yan. Sinasama ko nun sa land back sa Malolos eh. Biniro ko nga yung manager. Sabi, sabi ko, manager, kako ko. Mukhang hindi yata, mukhang hindi yata kayo seryoso. Bakit? Ang hirap kahit na, ako po, tatlong master's degree ko, hindi ko mapipila pa nito ng mga tinatanong mo dito dahil mga, mga ano, mga, yung ba mga, mga, mga statement, no? Mga study, gano'n. Paano mo mabiyari yung utang? Eh, hindi kaya nang magsasaka yun. Kahit na ako, hindi ko kaya. Hindi mo na ako negosyante. So, so we have to create a society na talagang pro-poor. Eh. We have to understand the limitations. And then, draw up a program around them. No? Ang average yata ng magsasaka natin, eh, grade 6 lang. Eh. And then, meron ka dapat na mga colleagues graduate, mga mga makabayan, baka mahirap talaga, na naka-standby sa land bank kalimbawa, no? Parang na gano'n, yung mga, mga nag, nag-a-apply, na, 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 natutulungan eh. W- wala, maniwala kayo. Tinan nyo yung ano, yung, tinan nyo yung ano, kung ilan farmers talaga, ano, ang, uh, ang nakakautang. Tapos ilan ang nakakabayan. Ilan nakakabayan, no? So, ay yun po ang sakit ng society natin kahit sa OFW for your information kasama po ako nung nakoy na ko ni Cablas Ople 1983 May 1 1983 doon tayo officially ang POEA so ako ang inappoint ng anti uh, illegal recruiting uh, uh, ano tawag dito anti recruiting na parang uh, ang hahabog sa mga illegal recruiters. And uh, kaya random na random ko yung hirap na dinanas ng mga niloloko na hanggang ngayon, ha, niloloko pa. I was a failure in, uh, in combating itong ano, illegal recruiter dahil uh, magagaling mga Pilipino sa panloloko. And then yung mga magsasaka naman, mahihirap dahil sa kahirapan, ano, yung uh, kumakagat sa patalim. Ang racket ng mga illegal recruiter, paghahanap ng isang uh, ng isang uh, aplikante sa isang barangay at paalisin nila. No, talagang ma-deploy nila. Tapos sa despedida party, na doon yung ano, yung mga racketeer, no? Magpapa-pesta at siyempre na doon yung kapit bahay. Tatanong, uh, paindo, uh, pa pa paano nun? Paano naka, nakakakuha ng trabaho abroad yung anak nyo? Ah, yan si, ano, yan kaibigan namin, si Willie Villarama. Yan ang, uh-huh. yan ang ano, recruiter na magaling. No? Kaya, ano, kaya, naka, kaya palis sa bukas yung aking anak. Ganyan. Yung Willie uh-huh. Villarama, <laughs> rapidin naman, lalapitan naman, no? Ako! Yes, may, may anak ako na, ano, na... Wow, talaga. Gusto lumipad, no? Gusto lumipad. 
Oh, sige, ako ba ala, pero alam niyo may gasus ito. At that time, di man libre ang racket yan. Mm. So, so, so mamaya ko, ante, nawala na yung hilig na rama. Y- 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 yun ang problema po. Uh, yung communication system noon, at saka ngayon, uh, failed pa rin. Imagine. Ang gano'n yan, hirap na hirap si Tots dyan eh. <laughs> ano? Oh. Hirap oh, si Tots magabol. <laughs> Oo, oh, hindi. Eh, eh, ang dami ko ng mga ideas, kahit anong nasa, nasa labor pa ako, sabi ko nga, lalo na ngayon, meron na tayong mga internet, di ba? Bakit hindi pwede maglagay sa bawat munisipyo ng, uh, ng program na diretsyo sa DOM, no? Para malaman, ito mong Bilirama <laughs> Recruitment Company, uh, may lisensyado ba ito? No? Lisensyado. Pwede ka maglagay sa mga mall. May cost me, may cost me. May, 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 may ano yata, may... May so, cost pwede, me, may... May, may, uh, pro, may, may, ano, may, may cross chain yata tayo. Hello? Oh. Hello? Pero may cross line yata tayo. So, uh, sa, sa mga ano, sa mga... Oh, Inalis ko na, yan ang gugulo. Sa, sa, mga, sa mga mall, pro, no? Uh, kung, ta, kung maalala nyo, doon pwede ka na kumuha ng NBI clearance, eh, di ba? Sa mga mall, pwede ka na kumuha ng passport. Bakit hindi maglagay ng isang malit na opisina na magbabayad yung may-ari ng mall, si C, kalwari, Robinson, Gokong Way, ng isang satellite office ng, ng uh, POEA. So that yung mga gustong uh, umalis, check-in nila ngayon. Sabi, p- uh, pwede po bang malaman ng record nitong Bilarama recruitment? So pag pinindot na kayo, makikita, no? Ilan ang napaalis? May kaso ba? Nasuspindi ba? O sarado na? Eh, napakasimple mga napakasimple pong mga ideya ko dahil dyan, dyan ako lumaki eh. Seven, seven years old na ako. Para bang yung ating lipunan talagang yung mga leader ayaw talagang pag-aanin ng buhay na mahihirap. I, I'm sorry to say this something na medyo radical. But we have, we have a lot of good people also. Pero yung ba mga practical na na ano na, na ano na solusyon. Uh, pinasok ko na yan sa doon ilang beses eh. Sabi, mag, magugulo yan. Uh, baka hindi pumayag yung mga may-ari ng mall dahil pipila doon yung mga pikante para mag-check. Alam mo, para bang uh, mas pinoproblema nila yung may-ari ng mall <laughs> kaysa yung niloloko ng ng mga buisit ng mga magnanakaw o mga recruiter, no? Eh, y- y- yun lang po ang aking ma- ano, ma- ang sesyat sa inyo kasi natutuwa ako kasi si Mike, kakilala ko yan. And, uh, tayo lahat halos eh, do-gooders eh. We're looking for solutions, no? Unfortunately, itong mga nakaupo, eh, kahit na ang liwa-liwanag ng solusyon, <laughs> hindi, <laughs> hindi pa rin maintindihan. Nagbobobohan, nagbobobohan, no? Takot sila sa mga sindikato. By the way, ito, maikli lang. Uh, bago, ako naka, ano, bago ako umalis papuntang Kennedy School, grumaduate ako sa DAP. Ano ako, seso po ako. Yung DAP nun, tu- tunay na ano yan, seso. Six months kami nakakulong sa, sa, ano, sa DAP, six months kami practicum. Ngayon, pag, uh, ang mabigat, pag kami uh, medyo pasado na, okay, may requirement kami na meron kami dapat i-implement for one year no? na isang project tungkol sa aming department. Okay. Ano na naisip ko? Si Doroy Valencia, kapitbahay namin niya sa Quezon City, siya ang hari ng mga parks, hindi ba? So pinuntahan ko, kako, si Doroy, kako, pwede mo ba akong bigyan ng isang maliit na booth dito sa Plaza Ferguson? Kasi park yun eh. Bakit? Magtitinda ka ba ng hotdog? <laughs> Hindi po, kako. Magtatayo po ako ng, ano, ng fios para sa mga mga gusto mag-abroad. So I explained to him kasi noon, print out pa lang. Wala pang, ano, wala pang internet doon eh. 
So ang ginawa ko, nagtayo ako ng parang kios. Tapos lahat ng uh, illegal na recruiter nandoon, nandoon sa nandoon sa maliit na kios, no. May tatlong tao. So ang ginagawa lang ng ano, tapos nagpagawa ako ng ano, may di pa ko inarkila na may may trompa. Kasi ang kuta ng mga illegal recruiter noon nasa Ermita Malate. So umiikot ako para ako kumakampanya. So, ayun na yung mga nag-a-apply. Ayun na yung mga nag-a-apply. Para, ayun yung mga nag-a-apply para mag-abroad. Sigurado ba kayong may lisensya yung inyong pakikohas uh, okay, tapos na kapila? Ang pinupunta ko, yung wala, yung wala talagang ano, yung walang lisensya talaga. So, na, Pumunta kayo sa Plaza Ferguson, nandun ang Minister of Labor, POEA. Doon yung mache-check, yung ano. So, wow, successful. Yung first day talaga, nakapila. Simple lang. They'll fill up a form, ilalagay nila kung anong recruitment company yung kanilang ina-applyan. Bilarama, construction, nandun yung address. Kasi pag, pag nag, uh, uh, nagre-recruit ka sa maling address, illegal recruiting na yan. You are only allowed to recruit do sa opisina mo. Okay. So, ang gagawin naman ng ano nung mga tao ko doon, de madali lang, bilirama, letter B. So, ilalagay nila uh, at eh, tapos ilalagay nung aplikante kung anong anong anong, anong kanyang skill, no? Kunarin ilalagay niya uh, uh, nurse, nursing, no? Kunarin nursing. So, paglabas ng bilirama re- uh, recruitment agency, nakalagay doon yung kanyang mga mga na, na-deploy na no na-deploy na doon makikita mo na yung kanyang nirerecruit naman hindi niya specialty okay so pwede mo ilagay ko dare nag ng teacher sabi niya okay eto teacher pero lima pa lang ang napapalis nito no in short it will give the applicant a clear uh, background of the ano okay Second day, wala nyo, nangyari. Siyempre, maaga ako doon. Katabi lang doon ng aking barberya. Katapat lang sa Plaza Ferguson. Sarado yung opsina ko, yung kiyos ko. Naka-standby yung tatlong staff ko. Nakaupo doon sa isang bangko sa park. <tinyo> Nandiyan yata si Hitler sa letrato. So, <coughs> sabi ko, ba't, ba't nakaupo pa kayo? Sabi, tanghali na. Sabi ko, pambira kayo. Sir, sabi ka yan, tingnan niyo yung kiosk natin. Eh, eto without exaggeration. Yung kiosk namin, pinuno ng dumi ng tao. Ang baho-baho. Talagang parang pininturahan. Kasi, so, uh, ang ibig ko sabihin, Successful, galit na galit yung mga recruiter dahil meron ng information, okay? So, pinagpatuloy ko naman yon Kaya lang, yun nga, may mga death threats, death threats. Mabuti na lang, tinanggap ako sa Harvard. So, <laughs> uh, nakaalis ako bago ako mapatay. So, y- yun po ang, ano, yun po ang uh, personal na experience ng uh, isang uh, naghahanap ng pagbabago. It is very dangerous because the few corrupt people are very violent and will never allow their income sa pagnanakal to be reduced. Y- yan po ang ano. And uh, tapang is not enough. Tapang is not enough. I did that when I was a congressman and uh, I got into trouble, legal trouble, death threats. Kasi, and, uh, kasi po, yung yung tapang pagpapatay pag hihiyain mo hindi solusyon yan eh kasi yung yung aalis yan papalitan lang ng isang magnanakaw din eh we are not solving the the root of the problem na yung system no yung sistema talaga sa presidential system versus parliamentary or another system can greatly uh, can greatly solve some of our uh, problems. So, pero going to mga departments, kailangan po mapag-aralan natin paano sila nagnanakaw. 
So that matakpan natin yung mga butas, ano? Yung mga butas ng pagdanakaw. But uh, when it comes to genuine work, pambihira po yung may hilig talaga sa, ano, sa detalya. Kaya hanga ako dito kay Professor Hill. Talagang hindi himay niya talaga. At naga, meron siya mga numero. Meron siya mga numero. Back up yung kanyang mga numero pag sinabi niya nga, ganito ang mga kadami ang mga nabola sa illegal recruitment. Itong breakdown, yung mga malalayong lugar, mas maraming nabobola. May, may numbers. So alam mo kung, kung ano, tapos bakit nabobola. So, Mahaba po, it, is, it needs uh, serious uh, people na hindi naman kailangan manghiya o pumatay o manggulo, hindi pag-aralan talaga. Kailangan maghati-hati tayo kung saan tayo gusto maging, ano, maging uh, expert o mag-research. Ang kwasi mat, maraming alam yan. Ang dami natin mga miyembro dito na, na, ano, na pag-aralan talaga, ano ba talaga ang sakit ng mga ahensyang ito. It has to be on a micro level. Hindi, hindi, hindi po pwedeng macro. Eh. Yung macro po, naririnig na lang natin lagi yung mga mga pintas. Eh. Kung kayo mga tumangatak yung laban sa administrasyon, panay, ano, panay expose. You know? Wala naman sinasabing how will they solve the problem of corruption in a micro level. No? Wala naman ganun. Eh. Kaya nagtataka sila. Bakit uh, sa survey, malalakas, malakas pa si Presidente Duterte? Eh, wala naman sila nakikita na bibigyan ng matinong solusyon na kapanipaniwala. Di ba? Hindi sapat yung sabihin mong magpapakulong ako ng mga korap. Ano ka magpapakulong eh? Napakahirap ma-prove yung korap. Patay na nga yung, ano, patay na nga yung nasasakdal eh. Hindi pa tapos ang kaso. So, itong ginagawa ni Profesor ano, Hill. Itong virtual congressman, congressman tayong lahat, libre. Uh, pwede magaling po dito yung, ano, yung mga idea natin na, na totoong mga solusyon. Ang akin lang po ano, ang akin lang pong advice sa atin lahat, pati sa sarili ko, pag po tayo masyado magagalit kasi yung galit, nakaka-blur ng utak yan eh. Hindi, ano, hindi, hindi tumatama yung solusyon pag galit tayo eh. We have to ask ourselves, uh, bakit, ba, bakit ba halimbawa, maraming nagkocomplain sa mahihirap? Bakit ba itong mahihirap eh, gustong gusto si Digong? Well, that has to be studied, no? If it's true or not, no? Pero ako, nakikita ko, nakikita nila, siya lang ang araw-araw, nasa radio, TV, na nagpaparamdam ng malasakit sa mahihirap, no? Sabi na natin, sinasabi, eh, nabobola lang. Pero at least may nang bobola sa kanila na nakakausap nila at saka hindi naman lahat eh, pabobola. Sino naman ang humaharap sa na national candidate na, na nakikipag-usap o may, may pamamaraan para makausap o marinig na mahihirap? So y- yan po ang uh, issue dito sa dating na halala. Yan lang po, uh, Prof. Thanks for the time. Ha? Uh, Maman, salamat. That's very uh, informational and that's based sa uh, mga malawak at malalim na taranasan ni Congressman uh, Villarama. Uh, ngayon, napakinggan natin ang reaksyon ng isang bata, sa uh, batang henerasyon, si Carlo Iway, nakataas ang kamay niya kanina pa. So, you have the floor, Carlo Iway. Go ahead. Where are you now, Carlo Iwa? You disappeared. <laughs> Something is wrong with your system. Bigla kang nawala. Oh, oh nawala si Carlo. So, maaaring may problema sa kanyang sistema. So, any other? Oh, yeah. Nandiyan ang kanang Arlo. You unmute and talk. You have been raising your hand for a long time. So, you better, you have the floor now. Carlo Iwai, do you hear me? Uh, mukhang meron siyang problema sa communication. So, are there any others who would like to react to the uh, sharing that uh, Congressman Villarama gave? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, Carlo, okay. are you ready? Congressman Villarama. Eh. 
Yeah. Go ahead. Congressman. Talk. 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 Siguro dapat bantayan natin ang ating bayan at alam natin to para hindi na maloko pang karabihan dito eh. Tempo muna at mag-update na ako mamaya. Okay. So, more vigilance is what you are suggesting. Okay, uh, Mike Aluna, you have the floor. What's happening? You don't have any sound. Uh, hanga ako doon sa mga nababanggit ni Kawili, no? Kaya nga, Congressman. Tsaka yung lalim at alawak at naranasan niya. Uh, siguro mga... One suggestion siguro, baka pwede natin magawa institutionalize on a large scale. Magkaroon tayo ang isang army of maybe thousands of economic cadres or uh, helping the poor. No? Uh, kasi ang mahirap, talagang wala lang skills. Hindi articulate. Uh, grade schooler lang, etc. No? Whether sa transport, sa... Ano, kasi kung titinan mo yung karanasan sa ibang bansa, uh, whether Europe, Canada, big Uh, uh, even, even France, France credit agricole, it's owned by farmers, farmers. Oh, oh, okay. uh, or Rabobank in Netherlands. So, uh, these are run also by professionals. So, or tina mo South Korea, mga farmers don, uh, they own a farm, they own a factory, but these are run Recording by professionals. These are owned by professionals, uh, graduates of universities na may alam na marketing, finance, management. So, ang empleyado nila, yun ang boss nila. Wala tayong ganong uh, sistema dito na nagtumutulong sa mahirap. Ang nangyayari dito sa atin, mga graduates natin, uh, maedukado natin, na brain drain. Siguro there are about 11 million abroad already as migrants or OFWs. No? Sa US alone, almost 5 million na. Uh, so ito yung mga edukado. No? The few na edukado or left behind, they are either working in companies <laughs> and the few uh, Uh, the few na who are working for the poor, nandun naman sa paliwa, human rights, mga environmental, wala masyado into project development, Sir, ako. Social, social enterprises, enterprises mga ganyan. Mag ganyan. So yun so, yung kulang na kulang tayo. tayo. Uh, so, kailangan natin, natin yung, 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 yung partnership, partnership of the young and the old the educated, less educated, the professionals, and the less, uh, less skilled. Ano. So, so if we can masistematize, masistutionalize natin yan. Kunyari, initially, bayad sila ng gobyerno. They say for the next year or two. Pero i-absorb sila doon sa po na sila rin mismo ang nagtumulong sa pag-organisa. Na palaki, na-access sa mga programs ng gobyerno. Kasi may mga financing programs, eh, yun ang dapat sa gabaan. Uh, na, na, hindi lang nasusunggaban na kasi wala na nagkasikaso na para sa mga hirap. Parang ganyan. Like, 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 yung mga initiative ni mga efforts ni experience ni Asama Willie, no? Mga ganyan. But this is isolated, isolated no? no? We can, can multiply at thousand, thousand times, times uh, yung mga ganyan. Yung mga ganyan. So, so Gawin natin yung incentive bits yung mga graduates of mga public schools, mga criminal top top, mga yun ay top top natin kasi nandun pa yung idealism nila. Tapos bigyan mo silang pass talaga na ano. Something like that. So yun yung isang ano. Tapos another ano, niisip ko, why don't we fight corruption with quote and quote corruption? Ano yung quote and quote corruption? You institutionalize Uh, uh, you, you shift, shift the governance, governance system, system from 
penance, penance uh, penalty based other to an incentive base kasi yung buong proseso ng gober- governance natin uh, penalty based kunyari you commit a crime or violate mayroong administrative or criminal sanction or penalty kulong ka o whatever no pero kung gawin mo incentive based uh, as simple as a traffic offense ang pinaka babang traffic offense 150 pesos for instance no ang incentive diyan 5% is eh, in other cities like Makati mataas na kumabot ng 20% yata or something pero nakukuha na every quarter no pero ang incentive to be corrupt mas mataas 50 pesos 100 pesos di ang nangyari if the incentive to be corrupt is higher than the incentive to do good eh magko-corrupt yung mga public servants natin Pero kung may incentive to do good, baka, kunyari, 50% yan, pero institutionalized mo, shared by all in the organization, you create a system, hindi na pupunta individually, no? So parang, ano. Pero, uh, ang mangyari dyan, that 75 pesos na instead of, di ba, 50%, eh, ang thinking na enforcer, aba, mas maganda na yung do good, mag pa sila, uh, di ba, may accomplishment sila, but it will discourage the motorist naman, the public, to bribe. Ngayon, pag inabuso naman, meron tayong one-time countervailing measure na mahigpit, as in one-time, ano, <laughs> uh, one-strike policy of some sort, no, na talagang matindi, no, mas worse na, no. So, ma-avoid yung abuse, uh, ng, ng authority no na or na enforcer yung public naman dalam nila mahigpit hindi mag-attempt magko-corrupt o magbribe or whatever Now, you apply this to BIR apply this to customs apply this to any government entity public etc uh posibleng titino now uh, ano experience ng ano let's say puta ka sa Subic or Clark bakit mga traffic, ano doon, ma, uh, disiplinado mga motorist. Kasi doon, hindi mo ma, di ba, eh, may red light, wala namang, ano, taho ito talaga sila, ano. Baka, just create the system, eh. Uh, I don't know, yun lang, yung kahit ko lang. Anyway, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, but are you uh, sort of uh, suggesting a retail bounty system? Uh, not really a retail bounties. You, you make it an institutionalized, institutionalized thing. Like for instance, in a government bureaucracy, grabe mga excess, mga wastage yan, you know. Uh, I even saw at one time, na uh, I used to be a newsman kasi nung araw, like dito sa Department of Agriculture, many, many, many years ago, for almost two years, nakita ko may isang urinal doll, tuloy-tuloy ang tagos ng tubig. And nobody really picks it, nobody gave a damn because... It will take so much time to requisition, ano, mga, uh, et cetera, no, mga. So, ganon yung sistema sa gobyerno, eh. Yung, so, ang dapat yan, if, kung meron silang may incentive mechanism, if they can save on mga unnecessary costs, it goes to a, a fund where part of which must, may incentive to the, everyone, no, something like that. So, everyone will have a, parang a stake ba may sense of stakeholder na tutulong sa so baka baka no kasi ang nangyari walang pakialaman eh kanya-kanyang ano sila so, uh, so what you're proposing has never it's been it's not practiced. really a bounty because a bounty parang may ano eh <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but my question is your your what you're proposing has never been practiced by any government at all ah yeah okay uh, one this one example in during the time si the late Miriam Defensor was head of immigration. What happened then, uh, she encouraged a form of an incentive uh, from part of revenues generated. But that was illegal kasi ang one fund concept of GOVA, one general fund concept, whatever they raise in fees, charges, etc., go straight to the treasury, di ba? Kung ginawa niya, nagre-retain siyang something like that. So she was charged for that. Pero ang nangyari, Inurong rin yung kaso kasi ang nangyari, 
No, no, uh, explain, explain, please explain. Oh, uh, the system, okay. The uh, ang, so, ang nangyari doon, uh, uh, every day, yung mga kunya, travel agencies, they were there even helping the government employees finish their work. Kasi ang nangyari, yung what took two, three days, o oh, nagagawa nila na few hours, no? Kasi ganado ang empleyado, ganado in-involve yung private sector, tumulong, they were bringing... How do, they, how do they make money out of it? Uh, merong, I think, a percentage or something of, of revenues was 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 retained. Yeah, a percentage, of the, something a percentage of, of the P goes oh, to the... Or something, the, something like that. No? Something like that. So, ang ano doon, that was illegal, quote-unquote. Pero ang question doon, did it affect performance? No, it doubled. No, no, okay. Now, I'm it just trying to... Okay. Mike, I'm just trying to cut it short because what do you want to yeah. learn is something that is already packaged, already practiced, and easily uh, adaptable. At so, this point, maybe uh, you will have to present something like that in more detail and we can discuss that at any other point. Now, but however, the other thing that you were suggesting, institutionalizing things to have uh, a core of people to help our uh, uh, underprivileged uh, country. An army. An army. Yeah. This is what we are trying to start here. Ah, okay. Because this, uh, what we are having now here is a shadow government structure. And all of us are volunteers. Later on, if we attain critical mass and we have contact and we have the track record of what we're doing, we can evolve into a real uh, private foundation that finances all of these things that we're doing. At this point, we are at a voluntary stage where we share our time, we share our skills, we share our knowledge through the web, even those uh, people whom you are pointing out who have brain drained out of our country can now be mobilized to assist us in a similar way that I am based out of the country most of the time. I visit uh, the Philippines uh, when I have uh, enough time, like I was just there for uh, 2016 to 2018. Uh, trying to be in constant contact with friends uh, and associate. But then I, I go out and associate with people here. And I have a lot of associates like uh, graduates uh, with the people with graduate degrees, uh, professors in other colleges. And those things, once we have a mechanism to uh, link up with groups like ours, can again be remobilized. Because right now, a uh, specificity, a specificity of place, location is no longer uh, quite uh, a limitation because of the uh, massive uh, uh, <clears throat> gains in uh, in uh, communication, and also manage uh, a lot of uh, technical gains in uh, cooperation software, uh, 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 distributed uh, processing systems, and things like that. I have that background of big data analytics, aside from being a uh, an economics uh, professional uh, and also a um, a part-time academician because I teach uh, whenever I, I, I have the time to do it. Uh, right now I am not teaching and what I'm doing right now is I am uh, uh, allocating the, the teaching time I'm doing, I was doing in the past to what I am doing now in this uh, shadow uh, Congress and the shadow government structures we're doing in the web. In a sense, what is happening here is uh, we have a political act, but it's also an educational webinar. Because uh, actually, the only power that we have is marshalling knowledge. Knowledge is also power. But it is not a political power bestowed on us as a mandate. Because our uh, process of uh, seeking a mandate of our people to speak for our people has been commercialized. It has been captured by a mercenary uh, group of people controlling the Comelec, a true Comelec smartmatic syndicates with the uh, cooperation and with the encouragement of the oligarchic classes that maintains uh, our country as a economic oyster for their own uh, private exploitation. So these are the things that we are beginning to change. Like for instance, when we talk about uh, poverty, we should not talk about uh, just poverty alleviation because when you talk about poverty alleviation, we are uh, surrendering to the concept of uh, trivia or uh, what they call trickle down effects from the activities of the private sector that will supposed to be grow the pie. And if the pie is large enough, then they can give pieces away to the lower classes or to the underprivileged poor. We have to look at the fact that our poverty is because 
the natural bounty of the land has been privately appropriated by a few. And it has, our political history has not allowed us to reverse it. And up to now, that practice of alienating what should be owned by all is still going on. For instance, who will benefit out of the 9 billion barrels of proven reserves in the West Philippine Sea? Who will be the owners of this 90, 930 trillion um, cubic feet of uh, natural gas in the West Philippine Sea? It will only be the oligarchs. There is no mechanism through which something like a stat oil of Norway can own uh, can let the people own these resources and become owners and partakers of this. That is the situation that we are in. Uh, we have to really face this. And right now we have a country dominated by oligarchs. I view the country as oligarch-held territory. And we, the effort that we're doing now is an effort to liberate our people from the clutches of these oligarchs. The problem that we're facing now is that um, the peaceful way to do it, which is through elections, is now controlled by them. They are the ones who choose uh, how we select our leaders. They control us. There are about, I have already pointed out, there are about, uh, in 2019 alone, there were about 14 million added voters in the public list. We have retail cheating, which is uh, retail vote buying, and we have wholesale digital uh, cheating. And then we have also mechanisms that frustrates the electoral redress uh, uh, system, the electoral grievance uh, redress system that we have. As we have witnessed the uh, five-year uh, saga of that uh, vice presidential protest of Bong Bong Marcos against uh, uh, Robredo. And the uh, statistical uh, science of that uh, particular 2016 elections proves that it was Marcos who was chosen by the people as the vice president. But our electoral, our electoral grievance system was not able to correct it. So these are, uh, these are, uh, these are, uh, uh, situations that uh, we have to deal with. Why do I say that? That the statistical science has shown that uh, it is Marcos who won. The exit poll of Mahar Manga has uh, showed it, but he was not uh, bold enough to defend it. The uh, succeeding uh, audit polls that I ran at Torben and Bayan proved it, that the estimated of margin of Marcos over uh, Robredo was about 2 million. And this was overcome by the cheating done by the COMELEC after that any correction that they did on the night of the elections. So uh, our electoral system, from the point of campaigns, from the point of the actual casting of the ballot and counting of the ballot, up to the electoral grievance system through this SCPET and the House, of, House, uh, House uh, Electoral Tribunal and every, everything else, Senate Electoral Tribunal, all of them are rotten from start to finish. So uh, this uh, process that we're doing now is a way to signify our, uh, our uh, uh, in indignation over this. And it's a way to circumvent uh, this uh, capture of the regulatory process of our elections. Now we are now designating ourselves as uh, representatives of the people, motto proprio, because we cannot do it any other way. When you go into the system, the system eats you up. In the same manner that uh, Digong ran against the system in 2016, but eventually he got eaten up by the system. A lot of people whom he had uh, teased with the political uh, uh, Red God uh, proposal that he has are now frustrated because he has not done anything. Up to now, we have that electoral capture, the electoral uh, regu regulatory capture of the COMELEC by these syndicates. So we start with this. We start with our shadow Congress. We start with our shadow uh, uh, executive structures, a shadow judiciary, a shadow Supreme Court, a shadow um, vice presidency, a shadow presidency. And uh, we start uh, uh, marshalling the knowledge required so that the truth
can speak to power in a detailed manner, not only in generalities. That is why we are creating uh, databases in each of the shadow departments. We will be harnessing uh, YouTube channels. We will be harnessing uh, uh, Zoom uh, meetings like this, uh, Facebook groups like this, and uh, chat groups all over. And that is what we want to do. By marshalling this knowledge, we hope that we can, uh, like the uh, like the maggots that are exposed to sunlight, all of this uh, corruption and rottenness in our system will be exposed and dried out and cleaned out. And so this is the effort we're doing. It's a voluntary effort. It is something that is not remunerated. We only get psychic satisfaction out of this, but we have more people and more people getting to be desperate at this point and we can mobilize and canalize that kind of sentiment. And that is our role. I am not, uh, I am not in any way entertaining any messianic complex of saving the nation. And I think most of us do not have that. Uh, like, uh, for instance, uh, I recognize it in uh, Congressman Willie Villarama Stone. He says, this is the way it is. Ganito ito ngayon, ganito ito noon. Baka maging ganito sa uh, kinabukasan kung tayo magsama-sama at magtulungan para mapunta tayo sa mas magandang kalagayan para sa bayan natin. It is a very practical evolutionary process, but we will uh, sort of, uh, what do you call this, uh, sort of uh, speed it up or telescope it and uh, speed up the process by marshalling knowledge in a way. Kasi ang ating ginagawa, ang karamihang mga do-gooders, mga NGOs, kalat-kalat, sabog-sabog, walang, in, walang, uh, walang overall clearing house ng knowledge. At saka minsan, meron pang mga turf geologies, no? Yung mga data nila hindi sinescare sa iba. So let us stop that. Let us uh, look at data, marshal it, analyze it, use what is useful to liberate our people, use what is useful para hiyain itong mga sinungaling, and provide our lawyers with a, a fact-based process of uh, confronting them whenever we have uh, enough uh, just, jud uh, judges in the judiciary system and justices in the appellate court and the Supreme Court who will listen to facts. But we have to marshal those facts. We have to start from this bottom line of putting together information in a systematic manner that is uh, compiled, that can also be easily retrieved for a particular purpose of crusading for something better in our governance. That is the message I think that uh, I'm sharing with you. And I hope that it uh, touches a relevant chord in your uh, minds and in your hearts so that we can continue doing this, not only on the short-term basis, but going forward. This particular uh, statement of Michael uh, <coughs> Alunan about institution building, this is the institution build-up we're doing. This shadow government uh, Facebook structures, these uh, YouTube channels, these uh, web uh, sites, this uh, uh, process that we are going through will be an institution. We don't care who becomes president in 2022. We continue with this process so that uh, the process of putting together facts, putting together uh, data so that we can speak with a clear, specific articulation of cases as we address and uh, point truth towards power will be more realistic and more practical and would have better effects. Any comment about that? I was reacting to you, Mike, Michael Lunan. You are still muted. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I, I agree with your, your points. Uh, this is a long process, but at least uh, we continue the discourse because uh, it is, and I agree with what uh, er, what uh, uh, Samang really mentioned earlier, uh, wag yung galit, no? Uh -huh. uh, yung galit style, ano yan, style kaliwa. It's actually anger and rage that puts you off, puts you down because that ito yung ito yung formula of the people in power of the oligarchs who use 
who have been their mechanism the uh, uh, instruments of power like uh, whether your military their their legal arsenal etc so but through discourse ideas uh, it is within their constitutional right to exchange no and it is through ideas that we can spread uh, and we can uh, let it just percolate among ourselves no hanggang it takes root in a large scale doon yung and that's through throughout history that's how movements uh, change social change happen upisa sa mga coffee shop upisa sa in this case zoom meetings you know so merong rallying point yan eh uh, so i agree i agree with that in fact di ba na for so long na uso yung kapihan di ba kapihan so siguro kung may physical ano tayo maganda i-introduce yung hindi kapihan kundi salabatan uh, we drink salabat uh, salabatan means discourse no so nagsasalabatan ng argumento no nagsasalabatan free exchange so walang right or wrong open yung ano but in the process you learn from each other eh. uh, and eh nung araw ginagawa kasi namin nasa UP pa kami noon eh ginagawa namin sa labat ng classroom so sa labatan sa labat ng classroom nag umiinom ng salabat something like that eh. and you can invite people of authority professors etc or ano then dito sa labatan peers so exchange so merong magandang ano yung so, yeah, see, Willie was raised, Willie was raising his son. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Kawili. You have the floor. You have to unmute yourself. Uh, Mike, maganda yung uh, kinekweto mo. Uh, remember, Hitler started in a beer house. Yeah, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anoyan, yeah. what happened? What happened in the beer house? Si 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 Hitler. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh do daki pagino man lang yan, nakikinig, nakikinig, ano? Very timid. Oh. Europe, eh, ba? Ano, the coffee shops. Yang at oh, coffee shop beer, 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 beer house uh, ano, sa Germany. Eh, gawin natin Pinoy kasi sa labat eh. Saka <laughs> nag-shift <laughs> na towards health conscious ano, di ba? Ang trend. Hindi na labat. Ginger. <laughs> Diyan nakikwento ko lang si Hitler. Diyan nagkumpisa. Yeah, He tama, was a tama. very timid guy. Tapos nung dumakasan lo. Diba? Nakipagdebate na. And he won the crowd. <laughs> the rest is history. So magdidebate kahit yung madibate sa isa't isa. Yung madibate, okay. magdidebate. So, but in the process, you will attain some synergy or some, di ba? Maganda yan. Uh, that's right. Okay, Bian Lorca, you have the floor. You are muted. You unmute yourself, please. Suggestion ko lang ito, at uh, malamang uh, ni isang congressman dito ay walang uh, papanig. Ngunit, if they are serious enough to obey the Constitution, dapat nila gagawin. Pagaya rito sa corruption issue. Pag nag-corrupt ang isang tao, dapat mayroon tayong batas na harsh penalty. Corruption at saka mga mapagsamantala. Pero nagtaka ako, bakit kahit isulat mo sa mga kongresista, hindi nila ginagawang bill yan. Ako, ilang beses ko na sinubukan yan. Sulat ako sa kanila. Pati kay Bobby Pacquiao na OFW Pabili na member ako ng OFW family, pero hindi nila sinagsagot. Sa Marino Partilis, hindi nila sinagsagot. So, nagtaka ako kung bakit. Pero kagaya nito sa mga mapagsamantala, kaya nabanggit ni ni, ni Congressman Balyarama, kahit sa ngayon, si Tots Ople, anak ni, ni Blas Ople, hirap dyan. Kagaya nito sa mga uh, trafficking ng mga OFW ay dapat ito maparusahan ito may harsh penalty dapat ito na i-implement ang problema 
mismo ang POA, walang batas na ganyan, against dyan. Kung mayroon man, medyo tapaw, yung uh, slight lang. Dapat, uh, kung totoo, kung totoo na eh, linisin natin ang ating bansa, linisin natin ang totoo. Kung kailangan putulin ng liig niyan para hindi na makaulit, putulin. Para wala nang sunod na maggawa uh, ulit. Kaya nabanggit ko yan na for every 1 million na corruption or uh, pangungulimat, putulan ka ng daliri. At kung mahigit 10 million, putulan ka ng ulo. Ito 50 million eh. Gaya nito nangyari kay Aguirre. 50 million niya. Eh. Bilangin ulit. Eh. 49 uh, million, 999. Hindi po tayo. Eh, wala nang uh, ano. So, ang matas natin ang may diferensya. Hindi ang taong bayan. Ang taong bayan, sunod-sunod lang yan. Kahit magsigaw man sila, wala mangyari. Kagaya nito sa nasigaw natin sa Artikulo 12. Dalawang taon na halos na sinisigaw natin ito. Na ibalik sa gobyerno itong uh, public utility. Sino nagkinig? Wala. But they are now mayuliting the Constitution. Pero acting sila doon sa, sa, sa Constitution pag para pabor sa kanila. So ang sistema talaga natin ang mali. Kaya palagi ko gina, dyan kami nagkaka, puminsan nagkakasagutan, nasabi nila, eh, bakit may, nagawa pa tayo ng konstitusyon? May original tayo kako ng konstitusyon. Ang 1899 konstitusyon, yan ang dapat sundin natin. Huwag yung gagawa ka ng uh, kung ano-ano pang konstitusyon. Na para mga, kaya nagpost ako na kung maga, nag-asawa si nanay mo ng Amerikano, si sunod nag-asawa ng Hapon, at sabi mo yan ang tunay mong tatay. Yan ang kagungungan. Ang tunay mong tatay, ang original mong tatay. Huwag yung uh, pangalawa o pangatlo o pangapat, lima, anim na asawa ng nanay mo. So correct me if I'm wrong, pero yan ang sabi ko sa akin. If we are really serious to clean the system in the government, let's be serious. Totally serious. Huwag yung uh, sad sadila lang natin. Paulit-ulit, repetition of the same mistake, pinahan, lagyan ng penalty. Sa mga fake news na ito, lagyan ng penalty. Sino mag-fake news kung putol ulo niya? Wala na. Salamat. Okay, now our speaker I think must be, uh, well, go ahead uh, Michael and you have the floor. You have to unmute. Okay. Uh, I'm just a little worried on sa stricter restriction, putul ulo or whatever, to get people to toe the line. We may end up another Pol Pot regime, a Stalin or Hitler. And that's precisely mahirap eh, because uh, you cannot... <laughs> maybe, maybe Ben Lorke was just inspired by your uh, statements that Hitler started in the beer house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pero, uh, I, I don't think that could be done no, because you really end up with more, more, and it will be an escalation of uh, uh, gory, bloody, you know. Uh, you'll end up with yeah, more well, dictatorships well, well, and that more. Is, uh, uh, that is noted. That is noted, yeah, Mike. Yeah. Let us hear from the younger people, Jingle Menes of Gigara. Go ahead, Jingle. You have to yes. unmute, Jingle. Yeah, go ahead. Ulit sa lahat, no? So, suggestion ko lang din doon sa sa sinasabi ni Sir Lorke. Uh, so, uh, siguro naman med medyo hindi, sabi na lang natin it's against the eyes of our God. So, medyo hindi naman uh, godly siya. So, para naman medyo ano natin, siguro sa mga ganong korap, no? Why, why not uh, punish them or give them penalty if, for example, kung magkano yung nakorap nila, it's either either double or triple penalty o times three or times two times three doon sa ibabalik nila. For example, nakorap sila sa 50 million, so they have to pay the 150 million para ibalik sa pondo para sa halip na magpa-progress sila, maranasan nila bumalik sa baba. Para in the future, alam na nila na Kung mag-corrupt sila, the more pa ang mawawala sa kanila. Yun ang suggestion ko lang. Thank you. Let us hear from others who uh, 
who have joined us here. We have Ka Olem and also Virgilio Perdinion and Joseph P. Uh, do you have any comments? I could give the floor to you uh, regarding the uh, uh, thoughts shared earlier. Uh, if uh, not, if there are no more comments, then I would like to give the floor to uh, um, Mr. Virgilio Paradigm. Do you like to talk? Be 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 yes, yes. yes um, go ahead. Uh, I was invited here by Carlo, and I'm very thankful because uh, I have learned a lot in the last uh, one hour and uh, or so. I am trying to get a grip on what is this all about. Parang nakikita ko it's a congress a virtual congress with good people coming together for the purpose of uh, bringing light to our darkening nation and i like that parang ano tayo mga crusaders we might be a little like uh, don quixote but i don't mind being uh, uh, called in such a way. At least merong nakikita ako na sincerity among the participants especially. And uh, if that is the case, uh, I'm in. Yeah, thank you very uh, much. You're very of, welcome to be with us every Friday. We have this meeting every Friday. We are the Shadow Congress. We want to uh, voice out the sentiments of the people that are not being discussed in our actual Congress. We also yeah. want to revive the spirit of the 1899 Malolos Congress, the founding uh, institution of our republic, which has never been, and which has created the 1899 constitution, which has never been abrogated by our people. Our okay, that, uh, group here abides with that constitution. Uh, that inspires me to, or gives me the idea to Google that. Even yes. in my elementary and high school, even college uh, years, I never got the chance to read the Malolos Constitution, actually. So you that can read it now. Idea. It's a very brief constitution and very enlightening. Yes. Yeah, I will uh, present my um, issues here in the gas paper or even the whole of Bicol because we have a lot, a lot of problems here. And I do believe that by synergizing with other Filipinos, wherever they are, we will we'll find our uh, solutions. Yeah. So I'll uh, be attending uh, this. Just mapalos, Just uh, yes. and uh, I hope that uh, all the Oragons of Bicol will join us in this. Effort. I will invite them too. I will uh, inform them. Uh, thank well, you I'm very much. Uh, the more we spread the news around, the better for us. Yeah. Okay. Can we give the floor to Kaolem Tasampa? As to can you talk and give us your reactions to what we're doing, or what you have, uh, have discussed in the past hour? Uh, how let me start responding. Mr. Joseph P., I know you just came in and uh, maybe you have not really heard what happened. So at the moment, I will turn the, uh, our speaker I think has been detained with some other activity. So I will present the uh, presentation for which was delayed and not presented in the past Congress. The uh, <clears throat> process of reorganizing our economy through militia economics. And I'm giving the uh, chair now, the floor to uh, Ben Lorke to preside because I will be preparing my presentation in the next uh, uh, five minutes. I'll proceed in the, within the next five minutes. I will start the presentation of the uh, reorganizing the Philippine economy through militia economics. Uh, ben, take the floor, take the chair. Thank you, and uh, okay, uh, let's proceed. You can present now your... Uh, uh, yes, I will need some time to get the slides going, just about give me a few minutes. You can continue discussing for a while, and I will uh, say in a few minutes when I am ready. Okay, so I noticed that for almost one hour, anyhow, 
uh, we are only uh, discussing outside the 1899 Constitution. So we haven't touched the real intents and purposes of this plenary session. So what I suggest is uh, on the following uh, plenary session until uh, November 30, uh, all that we are uh, all concerned that we are holding or we are uh, uh, or uh, in short uh, we are responsible so we have to focus on that not on other things around because like for example this corruption and uh, we don't need uh, to penalize them so why should we complain if we re we need not to penalize that's why marami akong kalaban. Alam mo kung bakit? Sabi ko, yan ang ayaw mo dahil isa ka pa. May kasabihan nung araw. Sabi niya, the slave of today will be a tyrant of tomorrow. Ngayon, nagbaliktad. The hero of today are tyrant of tomorrow. So, dapat ay mag-focus tayo. Let's say, for example, sa akin, sa shadow maritime industry. I have to focus on the shadow maritime. So, if you are focusing in the uh, local government. Okay, let's discuss what are your plan. What are the things that is uh, uh, advantageous to your constituents? Not that we have to balik-balik tayo sa corruption na yan at kung ano-ano pa na pag-usapan, wala mangyari sa buhay natin. Tatanda lang tayo dyan na hanggang buhay tayo ay wala mangyari sa atin. Pagayaan nito sa, sa mga overseas sa Pilipinos, ayaw natin ang may illegal recruitment. Pero sa ngayon, harap-harapan, may legal recruiter. So yan ang dapat pukusan natin ng pansin. If who is uh, in charge of the labor, who is in charge of the immigration, who is in charge of the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, pukus natin dyan. Paano natin masolusyonan dyan? So we have to act accordingly in accordance to the main intents and purposes of this uh, uh, shadow government. Yan lang akin. So, ano masabi nyo doon? Any comment for that? Kasi, like for example, sa nabanggit ko, si Kablas Ople, ilang taon siya na mamuno sa libor. So, gusto niya sana ituwid. Ngunit hindi naman tuwid-tuwid. Ngayon, si Tots ang nagpalit sa kanya, so, kung minsan nag-uusap kami ng thoughts, ilinti kay ganoon pa rin. Minsan, nag, uh, nagsahol pa. Para parapan na, na may lukuhan. Ang illegal recruiter mismo, kung minsan lumala lumalapit din sa amin. At nagsa nagsalita pa na, huwag mo na lang kami pansinin. So, ano klase meron tayo dito sa Pilipinas? Hindi ganyan. Dapat, if we want to reform, seriously natin. Uh, Sorry, Mr. 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 Speaker, I am uh, ready now to rise on a point of privilege, and it is a presentation of how this gov this effort of ours can lead uh, can lead uh, the process in terms of ideas and suggestions on how we can reorganize our economy for rapid development through militia economics. I I Percent. would like to be recognized. Recognized. Percent. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. I want to share my screen. You can see my screen now? Yep. It it's says re re reorganizing the uh, Philippine economy through uh, um, militia economics. You see uh, here images of the military behind the um, circular uh, icon of flags because it is a militia that will uh, propel a rapid 
reorganization of our Philippine economy when someone takes power who shares the ideals and aspirations that we have in our group. Our country is that you're familiar with these words, bayan ko binihag ka, nasadlak sa dusa. Philippines is very rich in natural resources. It has a skilled labor force with access to the uh, intense, uh, with access to the uh, best technology. But we have too many poor. And you have this image of these poor people all over the place. When uh, all over the world, when uh, poverty and the Philippines is Googled or in any other search engine, these images appear, and that is how our uh, country is perceived all over the world as a poor nation with very, very rich politicians and families that are even ranked in terms of ownership of wealth with the top 10 of the world's richest people. There seems to be an anomalous thing with that. And these are the very poor, that is the useful fair. I hope that they are still able to take that, even in these times of COVID. Kasi sabi sa akin ng isa kong relative doon, Kuya, noon kami isang kahig, isang toka. Ngayon, walang kahig, walang toka. And that is the situation that we face right now. Something is very wrong. You see this portrait? You have the high skyscrapers of Makati. This is along, I think, the Guadalupe uh, Bridge area. And then you have the shanties right before at the forefront. And the uh, this alienated uh, poor that we have here are exploited by those executives right there who have control of the economy and uh, an economy that is not able to provide for the basic needs of our people. Food, shelter, and clothing is a failed economy. And that is a prelude to a failed state, failed nation. So we have to reorganize this failed economy. Our basic law, the Constitution, directs the state to do something about it. I'm talking about the 1987 Constitution. It says the state shall promote industrialization and uh, full employment based on uh, sound agricultural development and agrarian reform through industries that make full and efficient use of human and natural resources and which are competitive in both domestic and foreign markets. Militia economics is one way to reorganize our economy and fulfill this constitutional mandate. What is this that I'm talking about? What is militia economics? The short answer is it, it is war economic. In times of war or in uh, preparation for war, Countries are forced to mobilize and optimize all resources that are available to them. They also fully harness all the technology that they can have access to so that they can produce war material to overcome their enemies. It is a matter of survival, so they do the best they can. Empirical studies have noticed the correlation between such war-related actions to the prosperity of a country, leading some to falsely conclude that war and prosperity for the warmongering country had some causal relation. And this is wrong. War and prosperity is a false causality. Prosperity happens because of the optimum mobilization of resources, including full labor absorption, meaning everybody employed, 
which happens in preparation for war and in sustaining the war effort. Prosperity happens not because of the war itself. The resulting surpluses from productivity increases, spills over into capacities to produce consumer needs when peacetime occurs. While the recovery towards high level consumer goods production does not happen quickly for the vanquished countries, it does occur after repairs of the installed industrial productive plants used during the war are done with the help of victor conquering countries. And that happened to Japan. In Europe, that happened through the Marshall Plan, which was uh, given to a land lease program by the United States to the uh, uh, countries that have uh, been devastated by war in Europe. And they, they were able to, with that money, they were able to reconstruct their industrial capacity and pay back to the United States in terms of goods exported to the United States and imported by the US. And that is how the Bretton Woods Convention came in. And that is how the United States dominated the world currency system to the hegemonial dollar. In the Philippines, we were neglected. MacArthur Parel uh, disagreed with Osmania when Osmania asked MacArthur to dismantle the industrial capacity of Japan and transfer it to the Philippines. He also made the... Uh, so Osmania even suggested the postponement of uh, independence uh, for a decade so that America will foot the bill in repairing our country because of the war of liberation where in Manila was totally destroyed. But MacArthur did not agree with that. He and Paul Macnut put up Rojas to contest uh, Sergio Osmania. And Sergio thought that there will be a challenge to him. Sergio Osmania was thinking that nobody will challenge him for the presidency. But Paul Macnut and MacArthur put up Rojas because of their disagreement with Osmania, and Rojas became the president of the restored uh, Commonwealth. Yeah, and they proceeded with just getting us off, signing our country as an independent country so that hindi sila makialam sa pag repair ng bansa. But uh, that uh, war, uh, the war that just transpired during that period, was the one which uh, showed how the American economy responded in terms of mobilizing its resources to be able to uh, create a very strong United States economy during that period between 1940 and 1944. They were they were spending at a deficit rate of 30% of GDP because they were producing it anyway with their mobilized, efficient uh, uh, war economy that produces, that produced a lot of tanks, a lot of uh, bullets, a lot of planes that they sent to Europe. This uh, compendium of measures, which uh, the Americans did between 1940 to 1945, is what is typical of what uh, I call militia economics. And this kind of process of reorganizing an economy for war was also experienced in Japan. Uh, when the Japanese were threatened by uh, the colonialism that was happening all around them in Asia, and they moved very fast to organize themselves after the Meiji Restoration, so that they rapidly industrialized and built a military uh, war economy, built uh, ships, uh, navy, that uh, later on even defeated uh, Russia in the 1904-1905 war. So this uh, militia economic policies predominated Japan during this period. And it continued onwards until it was able to change and challenge American a naval supremacy in 1941. This also was done by Benito Mussolini. You know, Benito Mussolini was uh, came to power in Italy ahead of Hitler, and he uh, took power in 22, 1922. He brought about uh, the successful uh, grain self-sufficiency of Italy. 
He made the trains run on time. He uh, surpassed the U.S. wheat productivity. He launched a massive uh, reclamation of uh, Marcy land in, the, in Italy and gave uh, this to the, to the management and control of a one million, uh, of, of this one million hectares of reclaimed land to the uh, veterans of uh, Italian wars. It was also used by China, and we even see them now in this militia economics wherein we are confronted with the fishing vessels in the West Philippine Sea manned by the Chinese militia. And uh, because they are Chinese militia, they are so our own, uh, our own private uh, fishing boats are intimidated and don't go near them. But uh, this is part of uh, how China developed without the control of monetary limitations by the IMF and the World Bank. And they also used uh, the militia building their army, not only to produce guns and bullets, but also to produce food for their people, like this uh, Chinese militia fishing boats here. And they uh, also exported their economy, productive capacity by acquiring lands in Africa, acquiring lands in South Africa, planting them to soybean, which is immediately exported uh, to China or imported by China from these sources. Militia people are doing that. That is why even our experience now with the Chinese incursions into our public uh, infrastructure, they send the people as construction crews and peppered with that group of people are members of the Chinese militia. Israel also used militia economics in a situation where they were dominated and surrounded by hostile countries. Everybody in Israel is a soldier. And now you see this uh, recent uh, display of Israel military uh, capacity with that Israel Iron Dome and their recent exchanges in the uh, West Bank with the uh, Hezbollah, I think, or some group that was raining uh, missiles into Israel. But Israel survived. Israel is thriving. Israel is a power in the Middle East because they're organized in militia economics uh, form. So, organization for full production need not produce guns, tanks, airplanes and bullets, the same process of organizing for full resource mobilization can be made to produce food, a shelter for our people, and clothing. If we can revive the textile industries, which was uh, destroyed by mismanagement, these textile industries uh, happened in the time of Garcia, President Garcia with his Filipino first policy, but then it was destroyed in succeeding uh, presidential administrations. And uh, together with this uh, process of uh, doing military economics, we have to uh, reconceptualize the way we view the factors of production. Because the real factors of production are just land, which is the natural resources that we have, our labor, and then also technology. Uh, what does this imply? It implies that our land should be shared. Our natural resources should be shared by all the stakeholders. We have to adopt certain uh, structures of ownership through equity restructuring, wherein we can produce uh, companies like the Stock Oil of Norway, wherein all the people of Norway owns their oil. We can uh, create a process without expropriation, but through uh, eminent domain uh, buying of the, all the mines in our country and let all our people partake of ownership in it and uh, so on and so forth. Because things that are given to us as a bounty by the Lord, by God, should not be appropriated privately by just a few people because a piece of paper was issued by the central government that they can do so. It should be at the stakes, shared by every one of us, because that is 
for all of us. Does it mean that we will uh, preclude uh, uh, private sector ownership? No. In this process, uh, the entrepreneurship will happen through community entrepreneurship, which are cooperatives, through private and individual entrepreneurships, which will uh, concentrate on technology buildup, which will be subsidized by government, and also by public entrepreneurship through government-owned corporations or municipality-owned corporations or provincial-owned corporations, which will have stakes with cross-ownership shares at any level of uh, production at, in all areas of the country. Our labor then will be seen as a factor in production and that means we will give them a free training and we will give them a free housing or almost free housing to some sort of very subsidized method because we want a well-sheltered labor force so that they can be healthy and also a labor force that is uh, properly skilled and also a labor force that will have universal health care because we want to have them healthy in producing the things that we need. And our technology will have to be harnessed to what? Building uh, institutional uh, practices like the TESDA, incorporating them into a civilian militia, where people who join our civilian militia after two or three years come out with high technological skills because they were trained in the Philippine Army. And then through this process, we will adopt a uh, process of uh, emphasizing physical production targeting, as opposed to the usual inflation targeting pursued by traditional Philippine economic managers. Fiscal policy are tuned to support physical production targets and accommodative monetary activism complements physical targets and fiscal policy. We will not be constrained by IMF targeting and World Bank suggestions. We will exercise full monetary sovereignty, wherein we will be able to stave off inflation by doing uh, within the cycle deficit spending, as well as over the cycle budget balancing, uh, complemented with uh, liquidity absorbing bond flotations to mitigate inflationary drag. Uh, I can explain this later on if you want uh, elaborations of this uh, economic concepts. So this framework to implement militia economics for the Philippines is our key towards reorganizing our economy towards uh, not alleviation of poverty, but making our poor people wealthy people because now they own the natural resources of the land. They are trained to do highly skilled labor activities and their health is protected and they have housing that is uh, given to them through the efforts of government and through their own efforts as members of a three mil or four million militia that will build uh, houses and produce food for our people so that even if other goods rise up in inflation, shelter and food will be available to our people at very, very modest prices. Civil militia government owned and controlled corporations, that is how we will proceed. Government owned controlled corporations will be organized for agriculture infrastructure. A 4 million strong militia will be built to concentrate in auxiliary non-combatant functions. GOCCs will be created for various purposes, which will be manned in a composite manner with private citizens working together with civil militia. These GOCCs will build agricultural infrastructure, irrigation, farm to market roads, operate food producing entities, and build transport arteries and broadcast and high band digital communications network. This also will build our military capacity, like uh, building uh, through marine plywood and all other materials available in our natural resources. We will build uh, a mosquito navy with uh, pity boats with uh, armed with missiles and torpedoes to protect the one of the longest coastlines in the world, and and then give us a credible and realistic stance at armed neutrality 
in the context of a truly independent foreign policy. We go through a simplified planning process and we will institute this in all areas of physical production, physical targeting, physical planning, and monetary activism. Physical production, as I've said, physical production targeting instead of inflation level targeting will be implemented. You know, with inflation level targeting, the government uh, defaults and give the role of uh, development to the private sector. In the context of the Philippines where the oligarchs are dominating, when they do that, you give this initiative, you surrender these initiatives to the private sector. And that is quite uh, deleterious to our future development because this uh, private sector, just think of their private interest and to hell with the public interest. And that has been seen in the way our crisis about water and power has happened after these 30 years of privatization that was indulged in by the returning oligarchs that, have, that Marcos has oppressed uh, during the martial law years. This uh, uh, inflation level targeting also is an affirmation of this uh, neo-colonial economic concepts of trickle down concepts, a trickle down processes of sharing the pie with the poor. And that is a very uh, casique like thinking, a patronizing attitude towards our masses of poor people. They should not just be alleviated, they must be made wealthy by creating a different concept of development through militia economics. Fiscal expenditure planning to support physical production targets and corresponding uh, increase in money supply through monetary sovereignty will be implemented. Equity restructuring will be used. We will not expropriate or nationalize existing mines. We will buy them out with a combination of uh, land swaps, bond issuances, and cash. But they will be uh, intertemporally spread out for 50-year payment uh, systems or 100-year bond issuances. And that's what we will do in terms of uh, uh, regaining ownership of the natural resources of the country, which we will now give to the proper stakeholders through municipality-owned corporations as stakeholders and provincially-owned corporations as stakeholders, as well as sectoral employees of the uh, SSS will own uh, ownership in these uh, big corporations that are now controlling our natural resources and GIS, GSIS members as well. So, uh, as I was explaining, ownership of these resources, that is our birthright, has been alienated from us. We are a land of abundance. Sinasabi nga, lupain ng ginto at bulaklak. Nung dumating si Magellan, sabi ni Magellan, wag yung tignan yung mga ginto ng mga tao kasi baka sabihin nila, mas mahalaga ang ginto yan kesa sa mga dala nating glass beads, mga rosaryo, ano ganon. Because at that time, the nuggets in Butuan are just picked up in the river and then the uh, people just hammered them into jewelry used on their bodies. That was how abundant gold was at the time. We fought and uh, when the Spaniards came, they blessed these mines of ours and they said, now this belongs to the king of Spain. We fought and reasserted our ownership in 1899, but the Americans intervened and said, from now on, these are ours now. So mineral resources should be owned by all the people. And uh, we could have done it, uh, creating a stock oil when we became independence, but lo and behold, what did the Americans do? They created our Congress into a constituent assembly. They kicked out Tarok and three other congressmen who were pro protesting parity rights, and they imposed on us parity amendments which allow the Americans to continue to control our mines and natural resources as though they were Filipinos, even if we are already independent. So we never had the chance to implement stock oil owned oil that happened in Norway 
Hindi tayo nagkaroon ng chance ng ganon because of disparity in neo-colonial constitution imposed on us. We have to reorient also now. Uh, <clears throat> We have to now reorient also our foreign service to focus on aggressive economic diplomacy. Our foreign service are just there sometimes cutting ribbons for economic, uh, for uh, Filipino associations, when their main purpose should be to acquire technology from the host countries that they are in, and also to develop export markets for our produce the same way that the Chinese uh, consulates and the Chinese embassies of the world used all the Chinatowns in the world to be the buyers of the products of China and also to acquire and uh, spy on technology that can be used by China to innovate on the, path, on the factories that they are buying from Detroit and the constructing in China. Because uh, China, mainland China does not import cars, they import car factories because of their productivity orientation to harness their massive 1.7 million population in their labor force. That is the kind of orientation that we should have among our economic managers, which is not so. They're all like puppets of economic managers of the West. And that is war. To reiterate, militia economics is war economics. However, Instead of using these tactics of optimum war material mobilization to produce war material, uh, resource mobilization to produce war material, we focus instead on producing food, housing, clothing, and other goods and services that are of strategic importance to our national life. In the process, we build a strong and wealthy citizenry who can interact with dignity and respectability with anyone among the community of nations. So why are there so many poor Filipinos when our country is so rich? Answer, because of the absence of leader managers with the creative ability to adapt lessons learned from the historical cases of the practice and implementation of militia economics. Why can't we elect them into office? We need to clean the elections to do that. That is why we have a shadow Congress now, because we cannot get elected to our Congress because of regulatory capture of the Comelec by syndicates. This widespread cheating by Comelec syndicates and the presence of padded voters have created a subjugated nation, a nation where we have to clean the elections so that we can get back and recover what I call an oligarch-dominated, an oligarch-occupied territory that has alienated resources from our masses of the people. So this is our country's ideal, to dream and recover our Eden loss. My dreams when life first opened to me, my dreams when the hopes of youth beat high, was to see thy loved face, O pearl of the Orient seas, from gloom and grief, from care and sorrow free. No blush in thy brow, no tear in thine eye. Kailan pa? Now na? Those who make peaceful revolution impossible, make violent Revolution inevitable. Thank you very much. Hello, am I still being heard? Yeah, okay. 
Non-mutual. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm open to interpolations on what I had just presented. Okay. Any, any, any question to that? And then uh, Professor Hill is ready to answer for it. I am ready to explain economic terms as I use, jargon that is there, so that this can be further understood by those who have heard my presentation and my privileged uh, point. Okay, Ma'am Wilma, you are raising your hand. May we hear your reaction, please? Wilma Masanilio, you are raising your hand. I know. You know, maybe ask, um, you, you have to unmute. Wilma, you're not heard. Okay. Um, Go ahead. You are recognized. Yeah, you have perfect. Um, um, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, we, uh, we appreciate your talk. Uh, sir. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, well said. Um, it is a nice program. Should this uh, the government um, be implemented? When will it be implemented? Um, because, uh, pardon me, he's, he's asking every he's organization asking, must. He is asking you, Professor Hill is asking you, when do you think this will be implemented? I think she's asking me that. Yeah. I really cannot answer you, Wilma, when it, this will be implemented because we will have to have the right leaders in government to have this implemented. And right now we are blocked from electing the, the correct leaders in government because Hello. our Pomelec is controlled by the oligarchs. Who are these controlling our Pomelec? These are the Smartmatic and uh, Pomelec syndicates. And there is uh, Incontrovertible, incontrovertible evidence of the presence of padded voters in the Comelec. So we expect another cheating galore come uh, eight, uh, elections 2022. That's why in the last portion of my slides, I have an image of the military. Are they willing to intervene? Are they willing to correct this process? Are they willing to withdraw? allegiance from the 1987 constitution and shift it to the 1899 constitution as a reset button to do all these things, control our election so that we can elect the proper leaders. That is a question for them to answer. On our part, as civilians, as part of the Philippine polity, we can talk to the class of 94 to 98, PMA classes. They are the ones now who are lieutenants, colonels, captains, majors, and colonels. Uh, to make them understand that they, the Katipunan army from which they were descended originally had allegiances to the 1899 constitution. To make them understand that civilian supremacy is only such is only justified if the civilians directing military authority have the proper mandates coming from a people who elected them through honest electoral processes, which is not happening in the Philippines right now. Now, any more uh, comments? or suggestion related to, uh, okay, Michael Alunan, you recognize. Okay, uh, basically, just three points. Uh, one, I, one, I deeply appreciate your emphasis on physical production, physical, you know, targeting, you know, because, I believe when we focus on increasing the pie, we rather than squabbling about how to share on the pie, which is essentially political, disruptive 
destructive and uh, we end up fighting against each other. Uh, it will not uh, bring us much anywhere, no? I mean something uh, positive. Uh, second point is uh, when you cited the, the inability of the last quotation of John Kennedy, the inability, inevitability of it's a revolution. Uh, it hints on something that is the uh, inevitable option of the left, which is revolution. And this is a little uh, discomforting for many, uh, for peace loving and all. And, and it is something that, in fact, the right and left are, for me, are the opposites of the same flip side of the coin. Uh, the military-industrial complex, whom Dwight Eisenhower exposed and warned, forewarned the public, has evolved into the and transmogrified into the military-industrial complex with the financial oligarchs, the network of big tech, uh, the mainstream media. Uh, the quote unquote uh, insidious civil society led by the likes of uh, George Soros Open Society funding all this color revolution, etc. And and even academe, no, uh, uh, which have been uh, partly instrumental in molding helping mold public opinion that helps the military industrial complex to perpetuate the, the idea of permanent revolution and permanent war from which they profit. Uh, like US, almost 60% of budgets are go to defense. The funding hundreds of globally I mean uh, so why I say even academe no you have the likes of uh, like Samuel Huntington's book on the class of civilization or uh, Allison Graham Allison's and the to see die this trap that inevitable a conflict with China and the US etc all of these justify the inevitable inevitability of war a gusto gusto na military industrial complex yan because the more there's war, the more they can produce battleships, armaments. Uh, Thing war economics nila eh. and uh, we want to shift from. I I I, I appreciated yung ano mo, instead of the war material, you shift to food, housing, agriculture, industries, and I guess that's that's what can change the paradigm somehow and because we are we fall into the trap into the arena of uh, this the tentacles of this so-called military industrial complex and its wide influence where they pit people against each other nations against nation religion against religion even within the muslim faith shiites and sunnis etc uh, in the U.S. alone, there are dozens of groups now, now along uh, squabbling or uh, fighting along ethnic lines, race, LGBTQ, uh, etc., uh, Black Lives Matter, neo-Nazis, white supremacy, etc. Uh, the more you talk about it, complaining about it's still there, it's raised, the more you emphasize it. Uh, this reminds me of, I think, uh, British uh, no, no, Lord Palmerston. He's the, he's the guy uh, who also who, who started this. You know, if you, there are no permanent friends or enemies, but permanent interests. Siya rin yung nagpupus na permanent, if I'm not mistaken, permanent revolution and and war. So they support both sides. Uh, support revolutions, insurgency, support, you know, fascist, military. Yes. So, Michael, what, is the, what is the question? 
So, uh, so, so I raise, I raise. So what is your focus question? The, I, I'm just, I appreciated the thing on the physical, uh, uh, but I'm a little uh, bothered and on, on the uh, quote-unquote in the beta liberal revolution, which, may, which will not, what makes us different from, let's say, the leftist option, which is brings us to the third option, which we, we may fall into the trap of the, the military industrial complex uh, uh, but you you have to you have to focus your question you're asking me a question yeah, what yeah. Do you want so to it's, it was my comment these were comments not questions so how do we when they said how do we reconcile all these issues that would make us somehow uh, distinct because somehow uh, your points are good on one aspect, but I'm a little bothered on sa ibang. Uh, the, the, uh, like the, 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 the the military the, economics. Okay, let, me, let me respond, Mr. Speaker. Okay. I may respond to the comment. Yes, yes, yeah, are um, The quote on Kennedy has nothing to do about my argument, my thesis, that the optimum tactics, uh, the tactics of optimization and the use of a full resource mobilization in a war economy can be used in the same manner to produce uh, non-war goods. That, okay, is totally, that is totally independent of that quote on Kennedy. The quote on Kennedy came in because of the allusion to the fact that I said policies like this can only happen in the country if we have leaders in position who understands this and can implement this, correct? However, I also pointed out the fact that our present selection of leaders in the electoral uh, <clears throat> system that we have right now would not be able, would not enable our people to choose such leaders who will follow this kind of uh, policies. So, if it cannot be done through the process of uh, peaceful arrangement in the selection of leaders, because our oligarchic classes are preventing that from happening, then violent revolution may happen. And the conception that revolution is a monopoly of the left is wrong. A revolution can be a golpe de estado coming from the existing military forces that are already in place to have gotten fed up with civilian tribunes who are not authorized by their illegal mandate to order them into life and death missions. That is also a revolution. They just call it a coup d'etat because it comes from the military. We are not advocating a coup d'etat our group, because we have the gift of the 1899 Constitution, which could be a reset button. We just have to convince our military, the young military, to take over the government because they are shifting their allegiance from the 1987 Constitution to the 1899 Constitution. There will be no military takeover because the forces that will enforce the military constitution the uh, 1899 Constitution will be constrained by the constitutional restraints on the forces of, uh, on the armed forces that are already in that 1899 Constitution. We must remember that the 1899 Constitution was instituted by the uh, leaders of our Congress in the 1899 Congress to restrain the dictatorial military powers of Emilio Aguinaldo. And Emilio Aguinaldo swore to serve under the constitution no longer as a dictator, but as a president of such republic. So when I refer to that Kennedy clause, I'm just warning these oligarchic forces who are resisting the aims of groups like ours to do it peacefully they frustrate us, we resort 
to something that is more forceful. Fortunately, it need not be violent. We just have to ask the military to withdraw support from this 1987 constitution, which has been mutilated, abused, and not used by this political oligarchy that we have. What are these reasons for me to say that this uh, constitution has been mutilated? The 1987, the 2001 coup against Arab broke the constitution. This imposition right now of uh, medical martial law protocols are not in the constitution, but they are doing it. So you see, we have a government of men and women who do as they please with the constitution. It is no longer a government of law under the principles of constitutionalism. Constitutionalism is the principle of a group of people in a polity agreeing that they will create a document that they will live by and follow so that there will be no problems in terms of stability of governance. But the, the, that paper constitution that we have now as a de facto guide, the 1987 constitution has been violated. What is in the constitution is not being done. Like what? The political dynasty provisions. Like what? The article of those provisions. They are not being done, but they are in the constitution. What is not in the constitution are being done. Like what? This invention of constructive resignation, it is not in the constitution. This medical martial law is not in the constitution. This idea that the sitting vice president, sitting president can run as a vice president is not in the spirit of the constitution. The purpose of that provision that he cannot get reelected as a president is to prevent incumbency from affecting the results of future elections. You see the sitting president is teasing the people now and saying, I will run as vice president. Imagine a sitting president running as a vice president. He will use the incumbency of his office to become vice president by hook or by crook. And with the presence of how many millions of padded voters in the Commonwealth, with the presence of the continued use of the Smartmatic and the yeah. tolerance of the Comelec syndicates, with the unintended effect of the Comelec syndicates being untouchable because of the constitutional protection of this paper constitution for this particular Comelec as a separate constitutional body. What will happen when a sitting president runs as vice president? This is what I'm talking about. We are now a government of men and women who do as they please. They do not follow this piece of paper which we have agreed on to follow, to have, a, to have a stability in our governance. So to tell the military to withdraw support from this 1987 constitution because of these facts would be logically acceptable. It just had to touch a nerve in them fortify them with enough moral courage to make such an act and shift from this 1987 constitution, which has already been mutilated by this government of men and women that are oligarchic controlled and go back to the gift of our forefathers, the 1899 constitution, which has never been abrogated by the Filipino people. Why is our jurisprudence ending with the 1935 constitution? All our lawyers are trained just to recognize the 89, 8, uh, 1935 Constitution. Why is our legislative precedence only ending up with legislation done under the 1935 Constitution? When we have legislative precedence done by our 1899 Congress, why, do that, why don't they recognize that the 1935 Constitution is a U.S. puppet Constitution? Why don't they recognize that the, La the Laurel Constitution is a uh, Japanese puppet constitution. Why don't we recognize the restored 1935 constitution after the war as a Laurel Langley de facto coerced parity rights constitution? Why don't we recognize that the 1973 constitution was a transmogrified constitution from the 1971 draft that was done by the 1971 delegates to the Constitutional Convention? Why don't we recognize that the 1987 constitution was an American protectorate constitution only facilitated by the kidnapping of Marcos to Hawaii by the Americans and the protection of Dan Quayle 
1989 to protect the Coris Malacanang being bombed by the Philippine Air Force and they themselves uh, dropped to one of the planes of the Philippine Air Force. That is uh, right now an American constitution, an American protectorate 1987 constitution, which has been mutilated by this government men and women who do things that are not in the constitution and do not do things that are in the constitution. That is my brief. And that is what is behind my proposal for reorganizing the country. But it can be done only with this uh, preliminary or pre prefixed activities that have to happen so that we can have the right leaders installed in the country who can do what I call militia economics, militia economics to redevelop and reorganize our Philippine economy. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Hill. And in addition to that, there is a saying that the uh, constitution or a law were made by man. And once the law or constitution is violated, so that needs to be amended or changed. Yeah, uh, Any more uh, suggestion or questions? It's comforting to hear the explanation of Hill. Okay, uh, Michael Alunan, you are good. It's comforting to hear the explanation of uh, Hill. And uh, let, let me bring back the, the wisdom cited by Willie Bilarama earlier that yung galit or raids will not bring us anywhere. So, so here, well, as you mentioned me, also, me, Ben, me, Lord, me, Lord, that, uh, let, let me mention that society that, that government is a man of passion. law. So, reason will bring us, so discourse and reason and, and the ideas, let's say, that which uh, Attorney Melchor Magdamo presented on uh, 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 bringing back the Katipunan, you know, uh, the Constitution will be something worth exploring. And, uh, you know, uh, so, so dito sa labanan ng idea would be the, the, the best, you know, a venue where we can gain traction and gain more momentum and following na, which would be, uh, distinct from the left option or a rightist fascist ano whatever so so na productive progressive uh, pro people etc because we, we were going back to the katipunan idea or where rizal was the honorary chairman no? and rizal uh was aware of the pitfalls of the french revolution no and in the french revolution uh, many romanticize about it, the activists, the revolutionaries, etc. But the French Revolution legitimate issue no, against uh, the monarchy, abuse, no, the liberty, fraternity, etc. Uh, but what happened there is uh, the, the British Empire uh, realized that after the 1776 American Revolution, they didn't want a repeat of another revolution in Europe, in France. Uh, so, uh, Mike, Mike, so what they cut, did... May I cut you and uh, welcome uh, yeah. Sunny Domingo, Captain Ray Marieros, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Attorney Melchor Magdamo. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so so what what the British Empire did, they infiltrated the French Revolution and even the its leader, Maximilien Robespierre, no? Uh, got influenced, created this Jacobin club. Then after the revolution, the Corona Jacobin terror. So the revolution gobbled up the sons and daughters of the revolution. So the, the point here is that the, the leftist option, the revolution, was hijacked uh, because the, the British uh, Empire at that time, to kill a revolution, you push it to its extreme. And in the extremism, you waylay the, 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 the vision, mission of the revolution itself and it caused the, its own destruction. Kaya nga, na, napalitan rin ang, it was replaced later on with Bonapartism, Napoleon, so back to dictatorship, etc. No? So, so ibig sabihin, we should uh, avoid yung extremism because we'll fall into the trap 
of what the military industrial complex, the oligarchs of this world. Uh, Mr. Speaker, oh, can I reply? Okay, so, yeah, okay, okay. okay. Professor Hill, uh, go the, ahead. Uh, the implication of the interpolation from uh, Michael mm -hmm. Aluna is that I am advocating extremism. I am not. Ah, okay. That's I good. am uh, delivering yeah, yeah. with passion. I am delivering with passion. I am not even angry. I am delivering with passion a warning to the oligarchic classes of the country that if they prevent us, people like us, from trying to do a peaceful process, they will meet something worse. That is my warning. That is why they should tolerate us, they should even support us as a golden parachute for them to have their cake and eat it too. We will not be expropriating them. We will be buying them off to correct our uh, system of stakeholders among our people so that our people will no longer be poor and destitute. The causes of poverty are not laziness. The causes of poverty is the alienation of the natural wealth of Filipinos from the Filipinos. And this particular alienation happened with our colonial experience and now carried on by oligarchic interests that are just really representing tentacles of oligarchic control from the global oligarchs. And yeah. we should correct that. And we are trying to do that in this group peacefully. So when I talk about these things, I am not advocating extremism. I am warning the oligarchic reactionary interest who will prevent efforts like ours from succeeding. Because if we are frustrated, if we are not allowed to pursue what is legitimately done peacefully, then may God have mercy on their soul. Yeah, uh, okay. I agree, I agree. So we'll win through reason. Yes. Because we're reasonable, that. yeah. I am for uh, that. And my, my passionate oration was a warning to these oligarchs. By the way, by the way, I think this is not yet time for argument, argumentation. And uh, let's uh, proceed to the intent and purpose of this plenary session, wherein we want to adopt the 1899 Constitution, no more than that. So, Mr. Uh, Attorney Magdamo, you are recognized. Can you please uh, unmute? Yeah. Uh, good morning. No, I was not able to follow the earlier discussions, but uh, last night we were in a meeting with the uh, Captain Ray Valeros and Ben Lorke, and I, I, I don't know about others uh, about Ivermectin, about the we can we, we can use this situation, uh, the medical martial law situation, uh, because it's it's really uh, it's the hot item now. And uh, we can use this opportunity, the medical martial law, because uh, it's, it is in violation of both the 1987 Constitution and the 1899 Constitution. So uh, it's, a, it's an invention of the, well, it's a, the, the incumbent administration. Either they did it deliberately or they were stupid or what. I, I really don't know. But there's a clear provision in one, in Section 105 of the local government code. Medical martial law can only be good for six months. And after that, turn over to the to the one who is in a better better position, better location to, to know what is the real situation. And uh, if we can push people initiatives using both the 1899 Constitution. Because by the way, in the 1899 Constitution, you go to Article 29. It's about blind obedience. Uh, the when when there's a clear violation of uh, basic basic principles, like for example, forcing you to take a vaccine against your will. Uh, it, the 1899 Constitution, particularly in Article 29, allows uh, the men in allows uh, including the in, including the soldiers allows them to. To delay, to, de to delay blind obedience, to question, <laughs> to question, um, to question authority. Unlike in the 1987 Constitution, uh, the, the soldier is an automaton. Eh. 
what the commander in chief says if, if the commander in chief says you you commit a jihad uh, uh you you kill yourself you crash an airplane into the world trade center you have no option to disobey because the under the 1987 constitution and most other constitutions soldiers are automatons uh upon a push of button you obey you cannot question that if you look at section uh, article 29 of the 1899 constitution soldiers are humans if the command is really is really notorious despicable and it's it's really unacceptable to humanity you you can delay blind obedience so and another thing there's no retirement age in, uh, in the 1899 constitution so captain ray valeros can still be an active duty under the 1899 constitution so maybe that's all i i i think i just have to catch up I'm, I'm still i don't know if i'm out of topic i still have to listen some more maybe i went off i, I don't know it's because right now we're, i'm i'm still listening to michael alunan about his extremism uh hakobian something uh what you call that? Uh, maybe i'll just follow I'll, I'll just listen to the discussion then i'll pick up later on so that i'll be in sync with, with the discussion uh maybe i uh, pass, uh, return to speaker ben Dano. well uh, you are uh, you're right and you are still uh, within the the topic and the uh, captain okay. Raybal, Raybal. may I speak on uh, something uh, uh just a moment after uh, captain ray valero and then uh, carlo ay uh, good morning everybody uh, good morning uh, brother hill attorney oh. Melchor, michael gian ben june berhilio wilma Olim and uh, Kong Willy and uh, Sunny Domingo. So, uh, yung manifestation ko lang uh, is uh, straight tayo to the point na gumamit tayo ng vehicle, kagaya ng sinabi ni Attorney Melchor. Uh, ang kailangan lang malaman na uh, magawa natin dito sa group is uh, magkaroon tayo ng fixed aim and timeline. Yun ang napaka-importante ngayon. Paano natin magagawa yan to be in line dun sa pinupush ng ibang group? So, kailangan natin ang bawat isa. I'm very happy talaga kahapon at nandun si Attorney Belchor. Uh, napakarami natin, halos 500 tayo na inabot dun, CDCPH. That only manifest na yung vehicle natin is sila. Bakit sila yung vehicle natin? Dahil sila ang pinaka-closest na naging winning point natin na pinakinggan ng gobyerno at hindi hindi hinadlangan yung ivermectin. So yung pinapakipaglaban natin, yung ginagawa natin ngayon, hindi naman to mababali wala dahil nakabuntot tayo ron eh. So sabihin natin kung saan tayo nakabuntot. We are happy now na meron tayong attorney Melchor, attorney Sugilon at yung law firm nila Sugilon Sugilon and Law Office. Marami silang mga abogado ron. And they are willing to to serve the people for free. Kagaya ni Atty. Melchor, nandito siya. Alam natin mga busy sila. And uh, to back up, yung, yung uh, CDCPH, mga noble doctors natin, kailangan nila ng lawyers. So that ma ma mabang talaga natin, ma-convey ma natin sa gobyerno, itong malawakang medical march. Eh sino ang magpapatunay nito? Dalawang sektor lang. Ang ating mga doktor na nakakaunawa ng malalim sa nangyayari at legally ang ating mga noble lawyers. So kapag ka na, na punta, nalagay nila ito sa magandang positioning, saka tayo papasok yung ating shadow government. Yun yung nakikita natin. Kasi forgive me for saying this. Uh, kilala naman ako ni Brother Ben, uh, ni, ni Hill. Uh, I like your passion talaga lahat. Yung bringing back history, which is our uh, foundation. Pero discussing much time regarding history, it will lead us to nowhere. Let us focus in our country. Yun ang sinasuggest ko rin sa CDCPH, eh, sa Gising Maharlika, kahit sa KDP. Let us focus in the issues in our country. Comparing what other countries did, uh, nananalo sila, gawin lang nating guidelines. Let us focus on what we want, what is our fixed goal, and yung timeline, napaka-importante kasi we are losing time now. Uh, I want to help the group itong, uh, to gain the same numbers of followers. Ito, uh, sana wag nyo take na, na ano to, uh, constructive uh, analysis ito. 
na kaya hindi tayo nakaka-gain ng masyadong uh, viewers at saka supporters dahil we are wasting much time on historical events. Ayaw makinig ng ibang mamamayan yan. Okay, from time to time, uh, mag-background tayo nung inline lang sa nangyayari ngayon. Yun rin ang sinabi ko kay Atty. Iggy kapag ka nag-uusap kami. Uh, si Atty. Uh, si Doc Iggy, nagsabi na siya, nakuha niya na yung point. Nakuha niya na yung shortcut to everything. Ang sabi niya sa amin, useless nang kausapin ang gobyerno. Which is right. Kasi alam ni Brother Ben yan, I have been in this struggle and fight since February 2020. I talked personally with Senator Bongo through uh, numerous song conference, to numerous congressmen and senator, Secretary Harry Roque, uh, Kiko uh, Duque ng Health, Eric Domingo, DOST, De La Peña. Alos lahat na kausap na natin at nagmamakaawa tayo, naglulumuhod sa kanila. Uh, pero walang nangyari. Happy noong uh, summer in uh, September, nabuo nila yung CDCPH, yung ating gising maharlika, na inline doon sa ating uh, struggle. So, humanap tayo ng vehicle. And the vehicle that we saw is yung ating uh, CDCPH doctors. Dahil sila lang ang pinapakinggan ng DOH. Dahil mga doctors rin sila. And mas matibay ngayon dahil back up ng mga lawyers sila. So, ang gustong mapakinggan kasi ng sambayan ng Pilipino, let me point this out, is ma-address yung karamihan ng mga tanong nila in line sa pinupus natin na shadow government. Ano yung mga katanungan nila? Napakalimanag. Uunahin pa rin natin yung sinabi ni Atty. Melchor. Resolvehin natin yung issue ng vaccination. Resolvehin natin yung vehicle. And ito yung dapat na unang call na gagawin ng shadow congress natin. Let us put everything in writing. At uh, andyan maghihimay si Atty. Mel, uh, pwede niyang pagandahin. Ano yung posisyon na gagawin natin? Pwede ba ang mga congressman gumawa muna sila ng pag-uusap at batas na yung gustong magpabakuna, give them their rights. Hindi tayo galit sa kanila. Pero on the onset, yung ayaw magpabakuna, bigyan rin sila ng equal rights. At papatunayan nung ayaw magpabakuna na hindi sila makakahawa at mahahawahan through taking this ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, uh, yung mga natural uh, preventive medicine natin na gawa ng magagaling na doctors. Nandiyan yung pabudan antiviral injection na talagang tinakal drug ako na magsasabi. Ilang beses na ako naturokan yan uh, na nasa Indonesia ngayon. Those are the things that we must push. So pag nakagawa na ng batas, so hindi na magiging persahan yung pinaplano nila na uh, vaccine passport. And uh, dahil sinuportahan natin yung vehicle na sinasabi ni Atty. Mel, yung paghihimay natin sa Medicare Martial oh, na susuportahan natin, then we will be gaining momentum. Kasi sa actually, yung ha ng pag-uusap natin, forgive me again in saying this, uh, mahal ko yung group na ito, kaya pagka may free time ako, pinipilit ko talaga na maka-join. Kung di man ako maka-join, pinapanood ko kayo. Pero ako rin nag-o-observe kung losing battle yung ginagawa natin or hindi. Ngayon, nasabi ko na losing battle because how many sessions do we have? Same personality pa rin ang uma-attend. And we are gaining the, the, the sympathy of the people. Kasi ayaw ng mga Pilipino people, actually, alam ni Atty. Milian, yung mga grand standing natin na, na pagsasalita, uh, bringing back historical facts na okay sa atin, sa kagayan natin. Pero tandaan natin, hindi lahat kagaya natin na may importante sa atin yan. Personal, ayaw pakinggan ng tao, personal thought, personal interest, personal view, ayaw nila yan. Pero kung ang pag-uusapan natin, yung gusto nilang marisolba ng mga problema, they will go here and watch us and listen to us. Proven na po yan. So, salamat uli sa inyong lahat at uh, may meeting pa ako. I will be here uh, listening and watching all of you. Uh, may meeting pa ako. Papunta ito doon sa, sa sinasabi at natutuhan ko kay Brother Hill. Doon ako nagsimula actually. Bakit kinausap ko ng, ng, ng lakas ng loob ang ating mga militar? At patuloy ako nakikipag-usap sa kanila. Hindi ako bihin to. Kasi pinepresent ko sa kanila yung statistic na binigay sa akin ni Brother Hill tungkol doon sa padded voter sa Comelec. Na kayang patunayan pag-usapan na mahihirapan ang Comelec na idepensa nila yan. Kasi statistic ang pinag-usapan eh. Statistic data is king. Hindi nila pwedeng maniobrahin yan. Lalo na talagang embedded na yan doon sa system. And the only way to change that is Erasin ang database sa Comelec. Tanggalin, burahin, 
i-delete at mag-register ng panibago, mabilis naman dahil may technology tayo ngayon, gamitin natin, na makapag-register yung mamamayan. So that will be our topic uh, this Sunday sa KDP Katipudan channel natin with Attorney Polly Sugilon. Attorney Polly served in the Supreme Court matagal. Nag-serve siya sa iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno. Uh, until now at her age, practicing lawyer siya. So, alam natin na kapag ka ang lawyer, marami pa rin kaysa ngayon, hindi natin masasabi na uh, hindi siya okay na lawyer or okay siya na lawyer doon sa dami ng naipapanalo niyang case. So, tayo natutuwa at supporter natin siya. Uh, same like uh, Attorney Melchor, yung anak niya, si Attorney Aaron uh, Sugilon, and the battery of their lawyers under their law firm. So, nasa winning battle tayo eh. Patunayan natin sa mga sundalo, yung 7 million padded voters, i-present natin sa kanila, then they will decide. Kasi alam natin na anumang election ang gawin natin. Ano man. Rig na yan eh. Sinasabi rin natin eh. Nakarig na yan kung sino yung nakaupo. Kaya nga hindi na hinabol ni Digong yan sila uh, Bautista. For a reason na meron sila nung pinakinabangang rin last election. That is how we, we analyze things. So, pangalawa na tinuro sa akin ni Brother Hill, uh, bukod yan sa statistic na yan, is talagang kausapin dahan-dahan yung ating mga military at kapulisan. At sinunod ko siya. We had a Zoom conference only a few weeks ago with PNP Legal Department. At umaten sila. Nakinig sila lahat. Mga generals doon. Nakinig sa atin. And we lay down our cards. Anong unang sinabi natin sa kanila? Sir, we are willing to die because of this struggle. Bakit? Pinoprotektahan namin kayo dahil pag kayo lahat naturukan, wala namang makakasuporta, makaka, uh, makakabigay ng concrete uh, yes or no answer kung kailan lalabas at kung ano-ano yung mga adverse side effect ng bakuna. What if? Nangyari na nga yan eh. Doon sa Deng Baksha at nangyari sa inyo after six months, after a year, isa-isa kayong nagbagsakan at nagkasakit. So, paano na kami? Mahal namin kapulisan. Paano yung internal security natin, yung peace, peace and order natin? That is how we, we, we look at things. So, na-convey namin sa, lahat, sa kanila lahat yan. And tinanong rin namin sa kanila, point blank, legal department ng PNP. Bakit po? Kapag ka merong uh, celebration sa kaya po, religious gathering, dikit-dikit sila, wala namang kayong ginawa at wala namang naparusahan. Nagkaroon tayo ng kilusang Mayo Uno sa Welcome Rotonda. Ganun rin, magkakadikit sama-sama. Okay rin naman sa inyo. Nag, yung last na event ng, ng paglibing kay uh, President uh, uh, Pinoy, sinalubong sa Manila Memorial, dikit-dikit rin ang tao, kadikit pa nila kapulisan. Wala rin nahuli. And last yung event sa, sa Mindyola, ng mga anti-government pa yon sumisigaw sila, aus Duterte. Pero walang ginawa ang kapulisan. Andun lang, nakamasid lang sila. Yan ang mga bagay na kinunvey namin sa kanila. And tinanong ko sila, why in the world, kapag ka mga tagaya namin ang nasa kalsada, sinusupress niyong magsalita? Ayaw niyong bigyan ng, ng, ng permit. So nagtataka kami, we are here to protect you, to protect our military. Dahil ang military, tinurukan rin sila. Last lang, last two days ago, tinurukan sa, sa Mindanao, yung infantry battalion natin doon. 1,000 mahigit yun. Yung iba nakakaramdam na ng, ng effect. Natatakot lang sila magsalita. So yun yung pinuprotektahan natin. Dahil pagdandahang nagbagsakan ang ating mga kasunduluhan, lalo may usapin sa West Philippines eh, eh, eh extra natin yan. So lahat po yan, naikonvey namin directly, face-to-face -face, sa PNP Legal Department. And now, uh, sumulat rin kami kay General Subihana sa ating AFP. And we want to convey the same uh, feelings namin na nandito tayo para protektahan sila. So, all of that natutunan ko kay Brother Hill. That, that is why I am giving Brother Hill my 100% support sa grupo na ito. At lumakas ang loob ko, nakikita ko lagi nandito si Attorney Melchor uh, Magdamo. And uh, marami pang lawyer, actually, nag-aarange ako ng malawakang Zoom conference with all noble lawyers. At marami nang nag-confirm. And I want uh, Attorney Melchor to do a presentation kasi mas nasusundan niya eh, yung lalim. At may malawak rin ang kaalaman niya sa COMELEC, sa nangyayari sa gobyerno. Dahil uh, alam niya, 
ang ang history. Napaka-importanting alam natin ng history. But again, yung mga citizen natin, hindi yan ang gustong mag- ang gusto nilang marinig is yung solusyon na pwedeng gawin nitong Shadow Congress. Ulitin ko, ang gusto nilang marinig is yung solusyon na ibibigay ng Shadow Congress natin. Yun ang gusto nilang marinig sa ating lahat. So, uh, Brother Hill, salamat. Uh, Michael, uh, Carlo, Ben, may lalo na kay Altorne, Melchor, kay uh, Congressman Willie uh, Villarama. And I want to, to join our uh, talakayan also. I have a program in 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 Gising Maharlika, uh, in KDP also, and in coming in uh, Euro TV. Uh, I want you to be there. I inviting you. Bibigay ko sa inyo yung link, and we discuss freely. Kasi through continuous discussing, don lang tayo discussion. Doon lang tayo nakakapagbigay ng tamang information sa sambayanan. At ang ginagawa namin sa mga programa, bago kami magsimula, kinokolekta namin yung mga tanong ng taong bayan. At yun ang dinidiscuss namin. Kasi doon sila magpupokus eh. Doon sila maiinggan yung makinig sa atin. So alam ko, maiinggan nyo sila, i-discuss natin ng malalim paano natin gigibain yung database sa COVID-19. Isa yan. Uh, sinasuggest ko sa mga doctors sa last uh, meeting, uh, binanggit na rin ni Atty. Aaron Sugilon, we will also destroy yung statistic database na ginawa ng DOH sa napakaraming patay na lahat pinaghalo-halo na nila. Hindi na nila pwedeng doktorin yun. So ma- yun ang pinagmulan ng lahat ng protocol, eh, yung database na nanggaling dun sa PCR testing. So we are openly saying we will destroy that database through what? Through a, a legislative uh, inquiry. Pwede rin mag-file sa korte para lumabas yan. I-suggest sa ating legislative body na mag-conduct ng investigation dahil ang karamihan ng citizen is doubt. Paano natin mapipwersa sila na gumawa ng ganyang aksyon? Doon sa sinasabi ni Atty. Mil. Doon tayo magsimula through barangays. 50 person every barangay. Susulat. Himayin natin ang database sa COVID-19 at himayin natin ang database doon sa mga namatay. As simple as that. And that will be the ground doon sa ating uh, people's initiative na Bukod doon sa 89 Constitution, meron tayong Republic Act 7.3.5, yung People's Initiative natin, na pwede nating i-inline ron. So yun yung matitibay. Kaya ako, tuwang-tuwa ako at yung grupo natin sa Gising Maharlika and KDP and the rest, nung marinig natin yung sinabi ni Atty. Mel na magsimula tayo doon sa ating uh, community. Mas matibay yun, local government, uh, code ang sunda natin na masipag ang ating gising Maharlika team, community base Araw-araw po, namamahagi sila ng flyers. So, idudugtong namin dyan. All over the Philippines po ito, ah. hindi lang to sa NCR. Yan po ang galaw ng gising Maharlika natin and through our noble young men and women. So, ang gagawin natin, sundan natin yung sinabi ni Atty. Mel, limang pulang na citizen bawat barangay. Na yun ang sinasabi. Sulat kamay, may pirma sila, may numbers na gusto namin, gobyerno, gusto po ng sambayanan na ma-review itong database sa COMELEC para maging patas ang labanan sa 2022. And, dahil ito yung kinakaharap natin, marami nang namatay, marami nang na- mamamatay pa kapag hindi natin ito nahimay, ihimay natin yung database na pinagmulan ng lahat ng protocol ng DOH at EITF. So, pag pinag-usapan sa legislative body yan, o kahit sa korte, mahirap nilang doktorin kasi bakit? Ang mga death certificate binigay ng hospital sa funeral homes, binigay niya sa cemetery, binigyan ang membro ng pamilya. Yung membro ng pamilya pinaserok sa bawat kapatid. Gusto nila magkaroon ng death certificate. Paano nila dodoktorin yan, attorney Mill? Mahirapan sila, doktorin nila, iisa-isa nila. And that is thousand already. So maraming salamat sa inyo. I don't want to take much okay. of your time. Yun, yun ang direction Thank sana. Suggestion lang yan. And all my... Uh, Conveyance and narration na, na binanggit rito is subject to everybody's uh, evaluation and analysis. Uh, yung binanggit ko is merely a suggestion to everybody so that we will gain numbers of supporters sa bawat live streaming natin. Kasi let us admit the fact, sayang yung effort natin kung tayo-tayo lang ang nakakarinig, nakakapanood, at nakakabasa ng mga comments. Na, na mahalaga naman na ginagawa ng ating Shadow Congress. Maraming salamat, okay. Atty. Thank you, salamat, Thank you Captain uh, Ray Baleros. At uh, dyan ako hanga sa'yo. Alam mo kung bakit sa tinagal-tagal natin ito ang dikada nagsama tayo lumaban sa maritime. At ngayon, lalo na dagdagan ng abilidad mo sa laban sa national uh, concern ng uh, mga taong bayan. 
So may we hear from uh, uh, Sunny Domingo? Sunny Domingo, are you still here? Ay, Carlo, I mean, Carlo. I already mentioned that you will be next to uh, Captain Bal. Carlo, can you please unmute? Okay. Now observe ko na, kama si Kapli. Will you please unmute? Yes po, okay na po. Unmute na po. Tapos na po. Okay. Now observe ko lang na, kama si Kapli. Siguro ang isang may Okay, balik na po ako. Klaro na po, klaro po. Okay, noted. And uh, Captain Ray, uh, itong uh, ginagawa ninyo sa gising Marlika, kung mari na i- ano mo rin ito ang uh, shadow government natin dahil uh, may kaugnayan ito doon sa pinaglalaban ninyo. At uh, ito ang maging isa sa benepisyo ng uh, revolutionary government ay revolutionary government ng uh, 1899 Constitution na makapag makatulong sa taong bayan. So, sa programa mo bukas, kung pwede mo rin mabanggit, kung mare na uh, hindi lang natin hinikayat sila doon sa Iber I I Ibermictin, kundi hinikayat din natin sila makipagtulungan na ang Seattle government ay uh, may tatag ng madalian para sa kalutasan ng mga problema na hinarap ng taong bayan. So, Sunday Domingo, uh, you will, you are recognized. May we hear from you? Sunny. Can you please unmute your audio? I think he's not responding. Uh, may I be recognized in the meantime? Okay, you are recognized, Professor Hill. Uh, I uh, appreciated what uh, Captain Gray Valero said, and uh, I... Uh, uh, <clears throat> saying you're welcome to his acknowledgement, whatever uh, guidance I have uh, been able to give him. And I'm also saying that uh, the efforts we're doing here in this uh, meeting of ours uh, is not just limited uh, in terms of reach and audience to the people present because our uh, meetings are live streamed to all of the uh, Facebook groups that we have, uh, including uh, the uh, uh, Shadow Congress uh, group itself, which has uh, 374 um, members, and also to the uh, DILG, Shadow DILG, which has 3,000 members, uh, and also to those uh, other shadow structures that we created that mimics the organization of the, uh, of the uh, Philippine executive uh, branches. Uh, so um, we have quite uh, a rich now, and in fact, uh, today I have noticed that there were so many people who were trying to enter our discussions here just to give us trouble. And I was able to stave them off. And uh, because uh, in, in itself also our technician, uh, Mel Lugod, has been suspended by uh, Facebook for some other reason. I think uh, we are getting these uh, reactions because uh, they are noticing the rich that we are uh, doing. And the discussions that happened before you arrived, uh, Melchor Magdamo and uh, Attorney Melchor and uh, Captain Baleros, we were actually discussing not just the historical uh, uh, vantage points of the 1899 Constitution. We were discussing certain uh, uh, suggestions which I did in a presentation on how to reorganize our uh, economy to meet our problems now using the optimization uh, tactics of militia economics in wartime. 
And that was the suggestion. When you overheard my reaction, I was just reacting to uh, uh, Mel, uh, Ma Michael Lalunan when he mentioned that uh, my uh, closing uh, slide was uh, maybe a form of extremism. When I warned people that uh, if we are not allowed to go through a process of uh, peaceful revolution, then uh, <coughs> uh, then uh, uh, violent revolution becomes uh, inevitable. I was quoting uh, President uh, John F. Kennedy of the USA in uh, making that, but I was explaining uh, that uh, it was not an extremism proposition; it was just uh, a, a warning being sent to the oligarchic classes who do not want to surrender the privileges that they have under a uh, dysfunctional economy and governance that is prevailing in the country, which they are taking advantage of, where they control all resources, where we have uh, very poor people, a mass a sea of poor people, and very rich uh, few politicians, and very rich few oligarchic families among us, even landing in the one to 10 rank of the richest people in the world, in the Forbes list. So uh, those are the things that uh, we, we discussed here. We were discussing the present situation, the present situation of uh, poverty and destitutiveness of our people and what we can do about it. And so the, and also in the uh, <clears throat> point of the process of criticizing the present uh, abuse, misuse and overthrow and uh, ignorance of the, uh, I mean, ignoring of the provisions of the 1987 constitution. Medical martial law was very prominent. When I said that our government right now is a government of men and women that are doing what they please to do without any uh, attention to the principles of constitutionalism and explicitly manifested in the 1987 constitution, which they just, uh, where they just do what they please, doing things that are not in the constitution, like uh, the uh, constructive uh, resignation doctrine of Hilarios Davide, and also the medical martial law that they are imposing now, and including this uh, violation of the spirit of the constitution with the political tease of, uh, President Digong to run as vice president when such is uh, really prohibited by the constitution so that incumbency cannot be used to affect uh, existing, uh, succeeding uh, election results. So medical martial law is one of them. And uh, there is no problem with linking up with the group of doctors and the group of lawyers who will fight this out. In fact, it will be an integrated process. And in fact, this is a process wherein a synergy will be created and uh, a process of emergence uh, can happen. And uh, the only thing we're doing is not even asserting leadership. We're just providing a framework so that if anything happens, a, a peaceful transition can occur through the reset uh, qualities and the legitimacy aspects of the 1899 constitution. Okay, thank you, Professor Hill. Uh, Sunny Domingo, are you still here? And John Albiso? Yes, uh, John Albiso, can you unmute and say something? He, he, John Albiso is based in Marihatag, Rigao del Sur. Uh -huh. so maybe, John, can you say something, John? Are you there? Are you listening? John Albiso, go ahead. Okay. You are John Albiso, you are recognized. John Albiso. Hello, Hello John, go ahead. John, Nika Hindika Marinik. He has already unmuted, but oh. uh, he, he's not talking. I don't know. Maybe his audio is uh, not Prob effective. Probably he has problem in his Audio is a, has a problem. Okay. Ayan, Marinik. Yes, Ito, no, no. Ako. No, it is uh, Carlo Iwa is speaking. Okay. Okay. So, Carlo, you are recognized. Okay. Uh, Capri, nabasa mo ba yung si Nacesco sa'yo, Capri?
na na na, na nagtumbs up siya. Carlo nagtumbs up si Capre. Babe sa banto, are you still here? Kaulim. Sunny Domingo. Ma'am Wilma, are you raising your hand? See, if you want to to say something, Ma'am Wilma, then uh, you are recognized. Okay. Okay. Mm, may You're I not, be recognized if nobody else is uh, talking? Yon Albiso, can you hear us? Yes, but he's not able to speak. Maybe his, his speaker is not uh, working, no? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, yes, any... uh, does Congressman Villarama is still listening and can he comment on what has been uh, Exchanges, particularly those coming from Captain Ray Valero. Sorry, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, Kong uh, Villarama, yeah. you recognize. Yeah. Well, uh, ang, ang uh, worry ko lang, uh, uh, Professor, no? uh, when, when we talk about uh, tari engagement, no? uh, that uh, the key to, to a particular uh, way to change the system is uh, to use the military it might turn off uh, a lot of uh, middle forces peaceful uh, filipinos no because uh, <coughs> masamang masama experience sa ed sa war at ed sa two so if we keep on uh, telling them that uh, the military can use the 8098 uh, constitution <coughs> uh, magtataka sila no uh, sing to mga military ito na, na may lakas ng loob when the 1898 constitution has not uh, been has not passed no let's say uh, the steps to make it uh, legitimate no uh, meaning to say you might need the supreme court uh, decision to to ano to accept it no just like yung ed sa ni gloria uh, tinanggap ng uh, right or wrong, tinanggap ng Supreme Court na yung, re, yung uh, pagre-resign ni ERAP is, uh, is legitimate. Ano? Because the original paper talaga, na paper ma, na binababasahin niya, nakalagay lang siya na acting president. Eh. Pero magagaling yung, yung mga abogado, na <laughs> unfortunately, uh, kasama din ako, Na, na 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 bago no na bago so what i'm trying to say uh, in in this uh, era of uh, of fear because of uh, what the present or how the present uh, administration uh, behaves no patayan takutan uh, baka sabihin ng mga ibang nakikinig sa atin Na parang we are also prepared no, to grab power using the 1898 Constitution through the young uh, military officers. Yeah, yun lang ang take ko. No? Kasi uh, at talagang ano, mas maraming middle forces na peaceful. Eh, kaya hindi mabenta yung kaliwa, hindi mabenta yung kanan. Ano? So maybe... Uh, uh, this is just a suggestion. No? We, we are one team. We, we can slow down on the, the use of the 1898. Because no? parang uh, suntok sa buwan as of today. Eh. Uh, it, it will be questioned by the young ones. Lalo na hindi nakakaintindi naman ng 1898. Tapos yung mga matatandang kamukha na men, natin, na natikman yung EDSA 1, EDSA 2, yun ngayon, parang nasa military rule din tayo. Eh, hindi, it doesn't work eh. Uh, ang military uh, are uh, poor implementers of democracy. Dahil uh, may, may baril sila eh. Pag matigas ang ulo mo, 
tututukan ka na ba rin? Pag sobra, ang uh, tigas ng ulo mo, babariling ka sa paa. <laughs> Pag matigas na sobra ulo mo, sa, sa ulo ka na, babarilin. No? So, y- yun lang ang aking, uh, ano, ang, uh, aking, uh, ang aking uh, take. Uh, thank you very much po. Okay, thank you. Kung uh, Bilirama, and reaction from uh, Captain Rebal. Uh, maraming salamat uh, Congressman Willie and uh, Brother Ben uh, Gusto ko lang i-convey sa lahat uh, Yung istan ng ating mga military friends uh, There is a beauty Sa nangyayaring chaos ngayon Bakit ko sinabi yan? Chaos tapos may beauty Ito po ang beauty niya Ito po, hindi po ito normal na people's power Hindi, well, hindi pa po nangyayari yung totoong people's power na ang pinoprotektahan is preservation of human dignity and sanctity of life. Never pa pong nangyari yan. Lahat ng previous na, na, na takeover natin is hindi siya, hindi siya totoong people's power. Hindi siya yung nagagaling sa puso. Maaring na ponduhan, na hikayat, at nagtrending lang, kaya sumama. That is the reality. Sa nangyayari ngayon, apektado po ang kapulisan at military. At hindi naman po sila ang magpupus nitong 1899 Constitution. They will ne- never do that. Sa marami natin pagkikipag-usap sa kanila, they will ne- never do that. They are waiting for the people's initiative under our <coughs> Constitution. We have the right to repel, to change. Yung alam natin na hindi na nasusunod sa kontrata. Ano po yung kontrata na laging sinasabi ng ating magigiting na abogado? Ang constitution po is isang kontrata. Kontrata ng mga Pilipino sa gobyerno. Yan po yan. At ay yung mga binoto natin, iniupo natin sila to represent us. Utosan natin sila. In layman's term, utosan natin sila. Pero pag nakaupo na sila, hindi na tayo kinukonsulta. Nagdi-decide na sila kahit sa buhay natin sila na nagdi-decide. And that is a clear violation, clear, crystal clear violation ng ating constitution. Hindi po sundalo at uh, uh, ang mag, uh, magbabalik ng 1899, 1899 constitution. Hindi po sila magpupush niyan. They are waiting for the people's initiative. And maliwanag po yung pagmumula natin. Uh, para hindi po tayo ma-offshoot, hindi masyadong lumawak yung kaisipan at mapunta sa hindi maunawaan ng ating mga mamamayan, sundan po natin yung sinabi ni Atty. Melchor Magdamo. Napakasimple. Napakasimple. Lahat tayo in support. Ilagay na natin doon sa manifesto. In support doon sa shadow government na hindi naman pag-aal sa to take over the government is uh, sumusuporta doon sa ating vehicle. Ano yung vehicle natin? Kasi napaka-importante na may pinagmumulan tayo para hindi tayo sabog. Yun ang naging suggestion ko eh. And, and I, I, I really, I don't know, Attorney Melchor, if you can in- initiate a uh, Uh, assume doon sa mga leader-leader ng KDP, ng ating DM, ng ating, para magkaroon tayo, ng CDCPH, para magkaroon tayo ng isang landas na tinatahak. At yun, mo, yan, yun, yun muna ang susundan natin. Lahat, lahat tayo, kasama yung shadow government, lahat tayo, tulong-tulong. Kasi at the end of the day, it will boil down doon sa pinapakipaglaban ng shadow government. Ang, ang mangyayari ganito, bigyan ko lang kayo ng perspektibo para maintindihan ng mga listener natin ngayon. Sinundan natin yung sinasabi ni Atty. Magdamo. Wala pa ang militar dito ah. Ichapuera natin ang military ito. Dahil sila nasa gitna sila. Although alam natin na ang ang allegiance nila, ang sinumpaan nila is to protect the people and our constitution. Lagyan natin ng direction siya. Okay. Ah, uh, sinunod natin yung sinasabi ni Attorney Milchor. How many barangays do we have? 44,000 plus. Hindi man natin marating yung 44,000 barangay. Kaya one fourth lang or less than one fourth. That number is good enough. Kasi ang sinasabi So, hindi man natin marating yan, magkaroon lang tayo ng consensus sa bawat barangay. Hindi na yung 44,000 plus na barangay. Kahit one port lang, mapapirmahan, limang, limang pun tao lang. Limang pun tao, through the initiative. Sinong may initiative? KDP? CDCPH? Shadow Government? Gising Maharlika? At yung mga noble patriots na natin nasa, nasa, nasa mga community, magpapakawala tayo ng mensahe. Uh, ang, ang, ang sulat, Pwede sulat ka may susundan nila, pwede pirmahan nila, naka-template na gagawin nila attorney Magdamo, nila attorney Sugilon. Ah, uh, ipapamahagi para hindi mahirapan ng sambayan, para hindi nila mahirapan. Basta at maintindihan, dalawa lang ang nakasulatan. Yung 
million padded voter sa Comelec or unahin natin ito uh, mga available cure natin at usapan natin yung statistic pag-usapan natin yung statistic doon sa uh, ginawa ng DOH na listahan ng mga nakat dahil hindi kami naniniwala na lahat yun is COVID dalawa lang item yun lang nasulat pipirmahan ngayon nila contact number pag nakolekta natin lahat bigay natin sa mga abogado natin and sila na ang magdadrap ng sulat sino ang may lumabas ba sa kalsada Sumulat lang eh. Yung labas natin sa kalsada, that is only a show of our passion na pabilisin na ng nating legislative at nating executive at judicial yung aksyon kasi marami nang namamatay. Yun, sundan natin. So nasa kami na nila, nila attorney Magdamo, ipapel na nila yan through the hierarchy of court. Kung kailangan magsimula yan sa mababa muna hanggang mapunta yan sa kataas-taasan Supreme Court. And gugulong ang batas dyan, di nila pwedeng aksyonan yan. Bakit? Kapag kayong sulat ng sambayanan, hindi na aksyonan, That is the time. Nakakausapin natin ng harapan ang ating mga military. Kayo na lang ang huli namin sandigan. Yung aming hinaing, ayaw nilang pakinggan. So saan tayo patungo bilang isang malayang mamamayan sa bansang Pilipinas? So ayaw naman natin na tayo yung mag-class. Kasi numbers will speak kahit sa bansa yan. And no soldier in his right mind na itututok niya ang baril para pumatay sa ngayon. Hindi, they will never do that. Nasubukan na namin yan. Pitong beses kami lumabas sa kalsada. ECQ, GCQ, MECQ, lahat na ng Q. Sinagasa namin. May, may nanghuli ba sa aming pulis? May nagkulong ba sa amin na pulis? May bumaril ba sa aming pulis? Bawat paglakad natin sa kalsada, isa lang sinasabi natin sa kanila, basahin nyo yung nakasulat sa aming mga banners at flyers. Anong unang nakalagay? Protect our policemen and military. So yung hindi nyo maisigaw, kami na ang nagsisigaw. So that is that must be the flow nung gagawin natin. May direksyon siya, fix siya, hindi, hindi siya paliku-liku, iisa yung tinatahak natin, at pag nakarating na tayo doon sa hakbangin na yun, nasa korte na, dahan-dahan na po nating patibayin itong ating shadow government. Kasi tatanungin ng korte, hindi ko alam, nakakaalam ang mga abogado. Uh, sumuporta na, by God's intervention, sumuporta ang ating militar. Teka lang, iba na yung sinisigaw ng majority ng mga Pilipino. Iba na ang sinisigaw nila. So, pwede ba pag-usapan natin ito? And they can do that. The chief of staff can do that. The very same way, nung sinabi nga na ni General Angelo Reyes na, uh, sorry Mr. President, we are withdrawing our full support to you being our commander-in-chief. Napakasimple, walang bloodshed. Pero bakit bumitaw? Maaring funded. Funded yun nangyari na yun. Pero ang inupo natin doon, hindi taong bayan. May inupo tayong presidente roon. Na isang sektor lang ang sumusuporta, hindi naman lahat tayo. And ganoon rin ang nangyari sa ibang presidente na inupo natin through people's power. Hindi naman lang, yun ang pulso ng sambayanan eh. Nakita nila, 2 million, 3 million. And that is not the pulse nung 100 million Filipinos or 90 million during that time. So ito, lagyan natin ng direksyon, hindi naman po mahirap. Ang pakiusap ko, ang dasal ko po, naglulumuhod na ako sa inyo. I'm begging on my bended knees. Lagyan natin ng direksyon itong pinapakipaglaban natin. Use our vehicle. Okay. Para may, pag, pagka na-establish natin, na pagtulungan na natin yan, then we will go through the discussion na patibayan natin yung ating shadow government. Dahil naka-structure na, nakita ko, shadow government ng Marina, DILG, lahat na ng sangay, meron na. So hindi tayo pwedeng akusahan ng military or ng kahit na sino, kahit ng gobyerno or Supreme Court na hindi ready ang sambayan ng Pilipino to take over. Anyway, hindi naman talaga yan ang permi na, na, na magmamanage sa lahat. Uh, yan lang ang magiging uh, transition uh, government. Kung sakasakali, nasuportahan na tayo ng ating mga mahal na militar. Maraming salamat. Brad. Okay, thank you Captain Ray. At uh, uh, Attorney Magdamo, can you please enlighten the, uh, our listeners? tungkol doon sa dapat kasi dapat usapan natin ang resolusyon na yun na dapat gawin yun ni Attorney uh, Posadas. Ngunit dahil wala si Attorney Posadas, can you enlighten us uh, the approach in the barangay? Oh, Mr. Speaker, can I you know, share a screen na ito advance copy lang nang ipapakita doon sa Ivermectin Group. Okay. Pero mauna itong group na to makikita yung rough draft. Mga okay. nine slides lang naman, nine slides, PowerPoint. Para okay, sige, okay, go ahead. Share screen ako ha. Okay. 
Anong nakikita nyo? Ah, oh, Ibermic Ibermic pen. Opo. Ah, uh, teka lang ha. Ibermic pen. Mm. Ah, uh, bale ito yung itsura ng papel na ipa-file sa kada barangay. Pwedeng papel literally na papel. Pwede din siyang downloadable apps na pindot na lang ang pindot yung ano yung yung uh, kung si, pwede sa smartphone scroll up scroll down pero i-imagine mo na pa, ordinary paper lang to um, nakasulat doon pang-meme lang yan Ivermectin independent verification of medical conditions first 10 agenda propositions kung i-zoom in natin to parang ganoon ang itsura niya no uh, kita nyo yung Republika ng Pilipinas, lalawigan ng, sabi natin, lalawigan ng uh, Ilocos o Davao o Biko, ano, uh, uh, of, uh, tapos yung bayan ng, uh, yung parang municipality, uh, pwedeng city, tapos barangay, tapos barangay X People's Initiative. Nakasulat na ng initiative na ito ay alansunod sa mandata ng saligang batas, tapos yung mga, yung mga, ano, yung mga provisions of the law. Ito yung 10 agenda propositions. Uh, kasi yung kagandaan ng local initiative, pwedeng marami. Unlike yung national in- in- initiative, yung, six, yung Republic Act 6735, isa lang ang pwede. Sa, sa local initiative, sky is the limit, kahit, kahit punuin mo yan. Pero mag-focus tayo sa 10, dahil nilalaro ko yung number 10 sa Ivermectin acronym para madaling i- i-meme sa, ano, sa Facebook. Tapos nakita nyo agenda number 1, yung CDC, PH, yung Concerned Doctors and Citizens of the Philippines, Agenda number two, yung FLCCC, Frontline COVID Critical Care International ito. Agenda number three, yung sa Singapore. Yung, di ba, ano, sa Singapore, simula two days ago, iba na yung approach nila eh. Hindi na sila nagpapaniwala dun sa pandemic scare. Pansin nyo yung foreign five, blanco pa yan. Pwede yung pumasok yung shadow government dyan. Yung number six, nandun yung province of Cebu, pero wala pa, wala pa akong consent, wala pa akong go signal kung pwede gamitin yung kay Gwen Garcia, wala akong direct line sa kanya eh. Tapos uh, may 7, 8, 9, 10, yung bagong Pilipinas, wala pang confirmation, ng meeting pa sila. Uh, yung shadow government, kung papayag yung grupo na to right now, uh, kung pwede pa, pa pumasok dyan sa, ano na yan, one of these 10. Uh, tapos in the next slide, bahay kita nyo, uh, uh, yan, may mga, mga ganyan, may mga, may mga social, social media influencers yung iba dyan eh. Katulad ng Provinciana, Proven Scientific Action for National Health. Mga, mga social media influencers yan. Eh. Pwedeng ganun. Tapos yung, ano, yung, yung details, titignan ng tao. Yung, baboto kasi yung tao eh. Sa Facebook na lang nila tingnan or social media, ano, sa mga websites. Katulad niya, no, yung, ganun yung itsura ng ano, uh, nakikita sa website or sa papel. Tapos yung fifilapan ng mga tao na baboto sa, sa, sa barangay, 50 persons lang ang kailangan eh. Um, yung first name, middle name, family name, birthplace, yung residence niya sa barangay. Tapos uh, basically, yun yung itsura ng balota eh. Kunyari, yung, yung proposition ng CDCPH, anong bota mo? No? Hindi mo alam? Yes? Uh, tayo rin ang gagawa ng balota actually, hindi komolek. So, hindi, hindi makikialam yung Smartmatic dito dahil uh, wala naman sa jurisdiction ng Smartmatic yung barangay. Eh. So, dito tayo Malulusotan yung ano, yung kasi Smartmatic, ano yun, kung Smartmatic magbibilang ng boto, ah, wala na yun, eh, tapos na tayo. But since we are in the barangay level, wala naman Smartmatic doon. Tayo ang gagawa ng balota, tayo ang design ng balota. Tapos, uh, yun yung mga, gagawa din tayong yung database. Eh. Hindi natin gagamitin yung common database, we will be using our own database sa barangay, barangay-based database. Yung, yung nakikita nyo, parang ano yan, eh, parang flowchart. Kasi kanina, may, yung, yung nasabi ko, you, we, we need at least 50 registered voters. Yung 50 na yan, kailangan yan kung, kung nag-no yung sanggunian ng barangay. Kung halimbawa, sumulat ka sa barangay, kahit isang tao lang, sumulat ka sa barangay, pag nag-yes yung barangay, eh, palalo ka na. Hindi mo na kailangan ng ano, hindi mo na kailangan ng 50. Pero kung nag-no yung barangay, doon mo kailangan i-present yung 50 registered voters. And yung 50 na yan, magde-demand ng referendum. At saka yung, yung resulta ng referendum ang magiging final decision, at least in that particular barangay. Tapos, ito yung nakikita nyo sa picture na ito. Ito yung parang uh, uh, flowchart na 
uh, magsisimula ka sa sa lower left may kita mo na gagawa mo na tayo ng database madali lang naman yon apps kahit, kahit ordinary paper and pencil pwede yan tapos uh, kapag nag yes yung barangay okay na tapos na kapag nag no we need uh, 50, 50 signatures of registered voters in that barangay to demand a referendum and that referendum must be done within 30 days from certification na ready na ang referendum so basically gan ganun yung ganun, ganun ang itsura ng ano ang itsura ng uh, papers ng ng people's initiative very simple lang sa barangay level so may I stop sharing and I, I return back to the the speaker uh, Ben yung ano okay okay thank you very much uh, attorney Mel at uh, you mentioned uh, about TikTok and TikTok is considered as a signature as well paano naman gagawin itong TikTok just in case nga hindi marunong sumulat o tamad sumulat ang uh, tao can you explain that to us so we could be enlightened of what uh, is the legal point of uh, TikTok? Kasi po yung strictness ng batas ng yung mga election laws, they apply to standard traditional election of persons. When you vote for a person, kailangan may mga standard forms ang komalik. But here, when you are voting for an initiative, you're not voting for a person but for a program. You're voting for an idea. Hindi na applicable yung mga strict rules strict na yun na kinakailangan ganyan to, kinakailangan gagamitin mo yung template na to, kinakailangan ganyan. Hindi na applicable yun dahil you are in a barangay level. Yung, uh, pwede nga lang lapis at yellow paper lang doon actually. So, it, it, the, the, the strictness of the election laws does not apply in, in a situation like this. Kaya pwede yung TikTok, pwede yung uh, Instagram, pwede yung Facebook. Kung, uh, kung basta wag lang tayo isa shut down ng Facebook. So, ano, uh, yun po, yun, yun po kasi the ano, the the law is lenient in 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 this type of ano, electoral exercise. Okay, any reaction to what was presented by Attorney Mel Magdamo? Babes, Abanto, you haven't uh comment yet john albiso and kaulin on berhelio pedri perdi yes uh can you pass na kailang uh okay you are okay but uh may i now uh, okay. you have the floor yeah yeah you have, you have the floor berhelio okay po salamat uh Perdigon po. Uh, una, sa presentation ni Sir Hill, maganda yung kanyang concept ng uh, economic paradigm, yung model after the military. In fact, I, it strikes a familiar chord sa akin because my profession is industrial engineering and uh, that profession was born during the First and Second World Wars and after the war, in adapt ng business community to optimize the utilization of resources. And I can guarantee that uh, that is a very big, uh, a very helpful uh, mechanism for exploring and exploiting our natural resources. On the second note po, in the Mangitya na, we are very, excuse me, we are very rich country, true. Again, a second familiar chord sa Bicol. Uh, I'll buy, particularly, may dalawa kaming geothermal plants dito. But, we are the most problematic province in terms of power supply. Uh, apat ang problematic electric cooperative sa Albay, uh, sa Pilipinas, tatlo doon nasa Southern Mindanao, ang pang-apat po Albay. Why is that so? May dalawa kaming tiwi at uh, maan ito geothermal plants, producing more than 247 megawatts by conservative estimate. Ang kailangan lang naman namin ay 90 megawatts. But we are indebted to power suppliers by already 8 billion and increasing. Yun ang wonder of wonders kung bakit nangyari yun. So isa sana yun sa mga issues na pwede namin ilatag dito sa virtual uh, congress. And if I may add, we have gold in Rapu-Rapu 
the miners, Koreans, Australians, uh, carted away 65 billion pesos worth of gold. Pero ang rapurapo ay third class municipality hanggang ngayon. So those are the paradoxes that uh, come up uh, that came up when uh, Sir Hill Ramos presented his uh, paper. Now, uh, a third point, uh, yung papano, how do we go there? Ang lumalabas po sa kanyang uh, recommendation is through the use of the military, fine. Uh, we believe that these are men of honor who are willing to die for their country. Okay. Pero kung, uh, in fact, napakinggan natin si Captain Ray Valeros na dapat ang manguna yung tao. Therefore, we should organize the people. Yung military uh, should be there as uh, protectors of the people. So itong mga ideas na to, kung pa saan tayo pupunta, paano tayo pupunta doon, maganda. But uh, again, uh, getting it from uh, Sir Michael Alunan, be careful. We might, uh, again, uh, uh, fall into the trap of the French Revolution. Sabi nga niya, the children of the French Revolution were devoured by that process. Nauwi sila kay Napoleon, nauwi sila sa great uh, ruin. So yun lang naman ang pwede nating uh, 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 pag-ingatan. We have this great dream. Uh, papano tayo pupunta doon? Pag-isipan natin mabuti, let's organize. We are men of good intent. Ang sabi nga ni, I, I don't know kung si Tolstoy mismo ang nagsalita, pero doon sa pelikula ng war and peace. If evil men can work together to get the, what they want, good men, and I believe we are all good men here, can also work together to get what we want. Yun lamang po. Thank you very much. Okay, Professor Hill, action please. Yes, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> it's very good uh, insight and comments from uh, a fellow Bicolano. <clears throat> I'm from Asbate, although we are called the uh, German Bicol because matitigas yung aming Bicol. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> kapo ko Bicolano yan si Virgilio at uh, ang pangalan namin magkawig pa may hill din sa kanyang pangalan yung sinasabi ni uh, ni uh, Michael at saka yung nakomentahan din ni uh, Virgilio na we may be devoured as children of the revolution uh, malamang hindi po na mangyayari yun kasi Hindi naman tayo ang nagrevolusyon eh. Yung nagrevolusyon po, yung ating mga ninuno sa 1899 Malolos uh, uh, Congress. They did the revolution and they gift and they freed our country from Spanish rule and they gifted us with the 1899 Constitution. Ngayon, ang uh, dictum ng law is that <clears throat> Law is silent in the face of arms. American arms interdicted our 1899 Constitution and, not, and has silenced it through the years. The 1935 Constitution, as explained by Mr. Magdamo in his last uh, presentation last time, in uh, last Saturday, has never been abrogated by any Constitution in the Philippines. I also pointed out in my presentation today that our legal jurisprudence, mostly based on the training of our lawyers, ends with the 1935 Constitution, which is in effect a uh, U.S. puppet constitution. Our legislative uh, precedence also ends up with the legislation created under the 1935 Constitution by our congresses that were done under those under that constitution, but it never recognized the legislative precedence promulgated by the 1899 Constitution. So in effect, when we say uh, we're creating a revolution, uh, we are ready for revolutionary change because we are just reminding our uh, people, our military, that they have already sworn to defend this Constitution when they were promulgated in 1899. In fact, our Philippine military uh, anniversary is counted now at 124 years old because they have already sworn to the constitution before in 1899. 
and they go back to their 1897 founding of the Katipunan Army. In 1897, the Katipunan Army was founded. Our Philippine Navy also uh, celebrates 123rd anniversary of their founding. Why? Because after the 1897 uh, Katipunan was founded, the uh, uh, several ports all over the Philippines surrendered the Spanish uh, boats there, and that was organized by our uh, forefathers as the first Philippine Navy in 1898. That is why they celebrate their anniversary as 123rd year, uh, one year after the 124th year of the Philippine Army. So there is no, there is not much danger using a peaceful path, using a peaceful path, we are asking the military to just revive their old allegiance to the 1899 constitution. And in the process of doing that, we are just letting them recognize that the, eight, the 1987 constitution, as far as the ruling classes of the country today are concerned, is just toilet paper. They do what they want. They do things that are not in the Constitution, and they don't. They ignore things that the Constitution tells them to do. And as, as I explained earlier, this violates the principle of constitutionalism. Constitutionalism as a principle is different from a particular Constitution because it protects the people from the exploitation of some groups using a paper constitution that was derived from the practice of constitutionalism as an instrument of exploitation of these people who are creators of the constitution under the principles of constitutionalism. That is why I say we are not at all creating a new revolution as long as we follow this process of withdrawing support from the de facto 1987 constitution and pledging support to the 1899 Constitution. This can start with this people's movement like we are doing here. And with more and more Filipinos pledging their allegiance, uh, ordinary Filipinos, non-military, pledging their allegiance to the 1899 Constitution, then it would just be a simple matter to ask now, the most organized element of our country and the, who controls the monopoly use of armed power to join us in this support for the 1899 Constitution. In the process of doing that, there seems to be a confusion among us that the military will take over, that we will be under military rule. No, the military only pledges allegiance to the 1899 Constitution, and we are not at all under military rule. We are under the rule of the 1899 Constitution. And there are all, this is also the misconception that if we do that, we will be trapped into the archaic traditions and uh, archaic provisions of the 1899 Constitution. No, we are using it as a reset button. It will be like the uh, 1776 to 1789 Constitution framed by the 13 colonies that rebelled against the Britain that has now 30, uh, 30 uh, I think 34 or 32 amendments. And uh, 27 of them ratified now by all the states of the United States. Our constitution, once we already, once it is uh, uh, pressed as a reset button, will be retrofitted to the current situation that we have. There are many proposals to amend the constitution. There is the Bayanihan constitution. There is a centrist constitution by the group of Lito Corinzana. There is a constitution draft, uh, crafted by Congress. There is a, uh, with, under the leadership of uh, 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 GMA when she was a speaker. There are other proposals about the groups. And those, uh, those uh, traditions, those, uh, those uh, proposals will be considered in the process of retrofitting into modern requirements, whatever we have to do to uh, uh, carry on under our present circumstances with the 1899 Constitution. So the formula is right there. The formula is peaceful. The formula is proof against military takeover. The formula is uh, also very practical and doable. It's just a matter of educating our citizen polity as well as our armed citizen polity, which happens to be the military.
always the most organized force in a country is the lead matter in the creation of a state. A state cannot exist if it does not have territory. That is why when our territory was conquered by the Americans in the Philippine-American War, our state ceased to exist. But at that point, it was because our military was defeated. When our military asserted its uh, power and uh, gained our uh, independence in 1898, June 1898, we began to form a proto-state. And it completed its uh, formation with the creation of the Constitution in 1899, which the military protected and subscribed to, and which also uh, curbed the abuses, the potential abuses of Emilio Aguinaldo. However, uh, he, because he uh, swore to serve as a president under the Constitution and ceased to be a dictator. So by going to the 89th Constitution, we are not going back to an Aguinaldo creation. It was a creation of our forefathers. It was a creation to restrict the dictatorial powers of Emilio Aguinaldo. It is a uh, creation of our people asserting a sovereignty untrammeled by any foreign influence. That is what we have to educate our people with because the uh, defeat of our nation by the American uh, imperialist created a cultural block in understanding our history. This has to be regained, although I understand that uh, Captain Ray Valeros would be impatient uh, with a lot of historical uh, discussion. The reason why I constantly harp on this uh, uh, vignettes of history uh, that I refer to is because this is a dark curtain in the consciousness of our people. It was uh, purposely done by the American imperialists. They purposely demonized Aguinaldo. Aguinaldo has many failings. He killed uh, Bonifacio. He killed uh, Antonio Luna, despite, after the, despite being already the president under the Republic. But the persona of Aguinaldo has to be divorced from his persona as president of the Republic. And that was something that he asserted. He, was, he happened to become the most capable person at the time, and he was able to do that. Nobody is perfect among our uh, founding fathers, just as uh, so many imperfect uh, actors also were involved in the American Revolution and in the French Revolution. Because as Mao Zedong has said, revolution is never a picnic. You need all kinds of people to get it done. We are, not, uh, we are not recreating a revolution anymore. We are just accepting the gift of that revolutionary experience and the birth of our republic from our founding fathers. And we're making use of that gift because it exists. It is there, so we use it because it's a gift from our founding fathers. Thank you. Uh, Professor uh, Hill, Ah, uh, thank you very much. At saka reaction mo pala doon sa nabanggit kanina ni Attorney Mel doon sa paragraph 4 and 5 na bacon na pwede ipasok doon ang uh, shadow government when it comes to barangay approach. Ano ang yes, reaction mo doon? Uh, yes, we will support that. There is no problem supporting that because uh, that is what we want to do. And the call of uh, Captain Ray Valeros to join this vehicle is not a problem at all. We are not a group that is uh, creating circles of inclusivity. We are creating larger circles of inclusivity so that we can provide a framework for all to work together towards a common goal. No okay. problems at all. Okay, thank you. So we have still uh, seven minutes uh, left. And any uh, I comments? May I ask them for attorney, our captain, wait to announce the planning meeting, the plan meeting for Friday. Okay, you are going to go ahead. Capri. Yes, go ahead, Brother Carlo. Paki announce na po yung meeting na the decision and last night yung dadam meeting ulit sa Friday ng CDCPH. Ah, hindi ako aware doon sa date na follow up meeting ng CDCPH. Sa Friday po ulit, Friday. Okay, so Friday. Yeah, okay. So we will be there. The same time? The same time? Parang the same time yata eh. Okay. 
And uh, Captain Ray, no? paki-inform. May ano din ako, may suggestion din ako. Kung pwede sa namin kayo next Friday sa program niyo, silkaw ng, ng, ng katotohanan. Uh, uh, Matis ka sa... Brother, bro- brother Carlo, so we will include you. Uh, uh, sa oh. atin, uh, basta uh, uh, mapalawak natin yung programa, tama si Brother Hill na. Bukod dun sa ating mga nabuo na shadow uh, government, mga department, uh, uh, halos kompleto na eh. So, from there, uh, matibay na uh, nakikita ko kasi yun na yung magiging backbone natin. At end. So, maganda mapag-usapan rin at ma- mabanggit sa sambayanan. So, ano yung, yung ginagawa ng sambayan ng Pilipino? And, uh, uh, karapatan natin ito. Mag- magtaguyod tayo, gumawa tayo na magiging backbone natin when the going gets tough. Anyway, ang totoong gobyerno no, tayo eh. Yan naman nakalagay sa kutsi. Yeah. Ang, ang totoong mm-hmm. gobyerno tayo. At nasanay lang tayong matakot eh. Yun nga ang sinasabi ko sa karamihan eh. Uh, na, na, nasanay tayong laging matakot. Lalo na, na si Digong na pintahan na ganun nga ang pagkatao niya. Uh, pwede magutos na pumatay. Ganun naman. Kahit naman common knowledge naman lahat sa lahat yan. Sa Dabao. Pinag-usapan na rin yan dati sa uh, Senado. So ganun siya napintahan. Kaya pag nagsalita siya, Akala ng lahat, yun na yung marching order niya. Pero abogado siya, alam niyang hindi pwede. At kahit yung force mass vaccination eh, mandatory, alam niyang hindi pwede sa constitution niya. So sila lang nag-aalat yes. ba na pag binanggit ng Pangulo, eh, magiging papas, gagawin ng panuntunan niya ng local government. This is not. Kasi nga tama si Atty. Melchor, meron tayong local government ko na hindi pwede pakialaman ng national. So doon tayo magsimula kasi mas malawak yun. So mm-hmm. salamat Atty. Mel. Salamat uh, Brother. May I speak, uh, Mr. Speaker? Yeah, go ahead. I would like to comment that uh, in the United States, there are about 700,000 uh, deaths to COVID. The population of the United States is, I think, 340 or 320 million. So roughly, for every 100 million, there are about uh, 200 plus deaths, 200,000 plus deaths in the United States. In the Philippines, we have 110 million people. Our death from COVID is just about 25 or 26,000. So you see, in the United States, the death rate is 10 times more. The crude death rate from COVID is about 10 times more. When I asked a certain uh, public officials about this, why the, despite the highest death here, that the United States is not daunted by it, and they opened up uh, all, almost all the states now on a normal basis. They said, well, that is the price of freedom we have to pay. We don't like to be locked down. So we want to choose freedom, and with that, the risk of getting COVID and the risk of dying from it, while our capacity to cure it has not yet coped up with it. So that is, there is a cost to freedom, and uh, the people right now in the Philippines have no choice of a, what I call a Hobson's choice. It is a choice of both uh, bad, uh, bad uh, alternatives. Either he dies from COVID because of the lack of the, of the uh, no, no lockdown policy, or he dies from hunger because of the lockdown policy, medical martial law. I think uh, since you, I, 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 I uh, Remember the quote of Natalia Bacalso, a former delegate to the Constitutional Convention of 71 and a delegate from Cebu in the Pusyon Bisaya. He says, uh, die today, die tomorrow, die the same. So, die from COVID, die from Gotham, die the same. So we better die free. And that is what I'm trying to impart to all of you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Hill. And uh, we still have two minutes. You could say something for one minute. So if no one has to say something, okay. and then uh, uh, Professor Hill. Wait, I would speak. Okay, I would Carlo, speak. you recognize. Okay. Uh, after, Captain, paki remind us that we paki invite the attorney please to para makasama natin siya sa pinaplano ng Zoom conference. At kailan po yun, Atten, Captain Ray? Yeah. 
Before I go, I would like to announce uh, that... Uh, si Captain, uh, si wait. Congressman Villarama is raising his hand. Okay. Uh, Professor here, si Congressman Villarama. No, Congressman Villarama will talk. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Kung Rokong Villarama. Please unmute. Kung okay, Villarama. Sir, sorry. Uh, alam niyo, itong project na piniliwanag sa atin ni Attorney Magdamo, mat mat matagal na yan. No? Ang suggestion ko... Uh, why don't we uh, experiment in one barangay? You know? uh, let them harass us. Let us allow them to stop us, so we can go to court to test the <laughs> to test the ano the legality, no? Kasi kung panay kwentuhan lang, wala namang wala namang ano, wala namang uh, nag-experiment. Uh, ano, ano kaso, di ba? The, the the law and I believe na tama naman si ano si si Attorney Magdamo abogado yan can be tested in court so pag uh, kahit na matagal dumating sa Supreme Court pag nanalo tayo bingo na yan we can change everything through a barangay ano through a barangay uh, assembly so yun lang po aking uh, uh, comment salamat po Okay, thank you, Kong Villarama. Okay, ulitin ko lang, ulitin ko lang, no? Si Attorney Tracy Sana. Napuputol po kayo. I-unmute mo, Carlo. Okay. At the place, kailan po ang date ng meeting na ito for lawyers? Pakiulit, Brother Carlo. Okay. Kailan po meeting ng lawyers? Ah, uh, ina-arrange pa natin, hinihingi natin yung confirmation. Hindi naman karamihan na lawyer to. Ang target natin is a uh, 15 to 20 lawyers na nag-confirm na sa atin. So, we will start. Uh, pero yung date wala pa kasi yung availability ng bawat lawyer, yun ang importante. So, yun pang hinihingi natin, Brother Carlo. Mr. Speaker, can I make an announcement? Yeah, yeah, yeah please go ahead. The uh, meeting, uh, our plenary session on uh, uh, June, July 24 will be addressed by uh, former Senator uh, Joe Lina. Yes, uh, he will be he will be addressing us on the topic uh, on a point of privilege discussing leadership in an imperfect democracy. Okay. Uh, based on his experience in the government. He was former senator, former governor of Laguna, and also a former DILD secretary. He said he will uh, arrive and join us at 9 o'clock in the morning, <clears throat> even if we, we start usually at 8 o'clock and we do socializing and exchanges of news. And at 9 o'clock, we will expect him to address us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And so now it times up. And uh, but if you if, if something uh, you want to uh, announce, then uh, you are free. If not, then uh, let's end the session. Okay. Have some. Uh, is Michael Alunan wanting to talk? Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being with us, and see you again next Saturday. Okay, thanks.